think we're on the... I think we're live. We're Does live. Know? Does anybody know? Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Oh, yeah. There we are. Hello, everyone. Hey, you know what I'm missing? What down, missing? down below the chat, there's a thing down there that's a... It's a, a thing. Okay. I'll it's, work on that. Okay, yeah. Because usually the chat's bigger and... A, I know you had to change the... Uh, yeah, I had yeah, to that looks good. Reset us back up towards what yeah. we're kind of used to. Yeah, and then to. the thing underneath there that was usually the that stuff. So, hello everyone. There's six people. Welcome there. to Tuesday night with. Oh, I spent Colleen, and Kim, Tom Brown, Bruce. He's Buff Del Campo, and I'm Kim of Kim Fixes Things. Yeah, no heart, no heart, and a thumbs up three times. Thumbs up. Yeah, I set that up tonight, and I actually knew how to do that this time. Usually, Kim's the one that's smart enough to do that, but now it just saves our settings for the most part. Sometimes I have to, that's the thing I want. Yes. No, that's not it. Oh, it isn't? Oh. Looked like the thing I wanted, but the, it was The ones that, but I found where it's at. It's, uh... That thing? Nothing happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, that's the thing I want to see. Ooh, yeah. That shows me. Quickly, I can look down there and see who's in. Um, All right, so we're not using StreamYard tonight. It was interesting, but very chaotic. I think what we're going to do is maybe once a month, we're going to do the StreamYard um, and build on that. Anybody okay with that? Hopefully you're okay with that. Tonight, we're just going to do kind of a regular sort of thing. We're in the dino room. Welcome to our dino room. Um, we are going to uh, talk about the things that happened this week and the things that are going on in our community and the car world and things like that. Um, I'm sure that we are going to spend some time talking about uh, Nivlac and the unfortunate circumstances that they're working on this week. Um, I think most of you have probably heard. If you haven't, you're going to... Uh, run into their. Oh, this shirt looks terrible on me. I think it looks fine. Okay. What are you doing? I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> You're stretching. <laughs> I thought you looked pretty good. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm in the wrong clothes. Ugh. Okay. You're okay. All right. Well, so um, the the injury was real. I was working on. Uh, oh, let's see. You got the band. You got the bandages off. I did oh. take the bandages off, and um. So, okay, in short. Quantum Maniac, in, hey, you're here. Hey, you made it this time. <laughs> so, um. Protoserves Burgers. Man, that sounds good. I wonder what they taste like. Oh, I'll bet you they're good. I'll bet you they <laughs> taste like buffalo. Bet you that's a lot of burger. Okay, so. Ugh, this shirt's making me crazy. I'm going to have to take it off. Um. No, no, no. <laughs> Kim's going to take it so off. So, my thumbs, both thumbs got whacked. I was. Okay, so I bought... Land and Custom Classic. So, I'll couldn't I'll get. Let, I'll let Kim tell her story. Okay, I couldn't get a three-quarter tee. We were over at the, the Home and Farm store with the um, yeah, so Rural King. And I was trying to get a three-quarter tee for the hydraulic return lines. Um, and I wanted steel, and I couldn't get it. So I ended up buying black pipe, a tee, and then three black pipe nipples about three inches long. And they're already threaded. That's good for going into the thing. But I didn't really want to stuff a rubber hose on the end of a threaded pipe. And they were tight, you know. So I just wanted to take... And, and those threads are sharp. When freshly cut threads are very sharp. So I wanted to uh, just, you know, take the edge off of them. And then give it a little bit of a taper at the edge. And I was doing that on the grinding wheel. And somehow... I'm not really not sure exactly. But, you know, I'm just holding it like this. Somehow... It caught just a little bit too hard, and the guard on the outside of the stone wheel, it pushed it down there, and it sucked it in. Oh, you were on so the one that was on the stand? Yeah. I oh, I thought you were in a handheld one. Okay. And so it pulled the nipple down in and ripped it out of my hand. So I don't know how much damage there was done by ripping it out of my hand. I think I have scratches here from where it pulled it out of my hand. But then it, you know, spun it around and shot it out. And luckily it shot it where it did honestly it hit me in the thumbs and busted the top off of both of my thumbs so i'm bruised and and have cuts from the sharp metal um and they and blood just was like gushing out i was like ah 
<laughs> so I'm holding my hands and blood's dripping off my wrists. Mm. And I, I like stop, walk. stop the story. We have these little handheld radios. So if we're not in the same place, we always carry the handheld radios. She didn't take the radio with her. I was in the house. You were in the house anyways. What was I going to do? Run you yeah, over? Well, get, grab the radio and go, I'm hurt. But you didn't. So anyway, go no, ahead with your story. I walked over here and then he gently rubbed them clean and they weren't it wasn't really that bad it was unpleasant but it wasn't like anything that i needed stitches there was or anything. a lot of blood there was considering a little i guess your the tips of your thumbs have a, yes i still look they're still here um yeah but i guess the tips tips of your tongue these things have blood in them a lot of blood it comes out really quickly when you break them open and it hurt really bad because it, it whacked me hard well, well, she comes in and she goes, I cut the ends of my fingers off. So I'm like, bro, oh, she's holding all this something, paper towels. And she wants me to clean it up. So I go get the um, some stuff to clean it. And um, what is that stuff? The um, Hydrogen peroxide. You she know, wanted me to use peroxide. So I've I heard that about marathoning. Actually, that if you don't, you'll get very, very sore from <laughs> bouncing. So, so I don't so, know. So yeah, she's, probably. She's holding her hands all like this. I was freaked out. I didn't know how bad it was, was going to be, bit. really. There was a lot of blood. So I said, okay. She goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not a good doctor. I don't want to look at this. And she pulls her thumbs out. And she'd been holding it shut long enough it wasn't bleeding. So I looked at it, and I'm like, come on, let's see it. I think it, well, she said she cut the ends of a couple of her fingers off. So I'm waiting for her to show me the fingers, and she goes, no, it's the thumbs. I go, oh, that's it? That's, that's not so it. That's not so bad. I was worried. It was already stopped, but it was greasy, grimy. I was oh. afraid to even look. It really so I hurt. Clean, so I cleaned it up, and, uh, yeah, I'll be on the lookout. For, yeah, we, we were just talking about that. Yes, Calvin's Nid car. Black is is on our agenda of things to speak about maybe i'll bring i'll bring up his his car um and you can start to tell anybody i i think of the people who are viewing now i'll bet you they all kind of if any of you have seen his last he's done two videos about the theft and the last one has a has a link in the top of the somewhere in there for the uh, GoFundMe. They're trying to get some money together so they can at least get him some tools and things because, you know, they took a lot of stuff and uh, yeah, they helped, helped them out a bit, you know. Um, oh, there's, yeah, there we go. Car, That's so. the missing car. Um, and, yeah, the Studebaker, the blue one with the white fender. Oh, yeah, and there's a set of headers on there that are not replaceable. You know, you know and some thieves get that. So they're just going to, like he says, they'll probably light it on fire and shove it somewhere, push it in the bottom of a lake, you know, because so it's, they'll get caught with that thing. I, I think, I, I mean, it'll surely get chopped. Like somebody will take it. If, if it's not found, like, immediately, they'll, they'll have to cut it up because there's no way they can what, sell that car. Whole. What I'm hoping is that they see it's something... That it's a one of a kind thing, and they just shove dump it, off. it on the side just of the road. Just dump it off the side of the road somewhere, because the truck and the trailer is unfortunate. The tools unfortunate. That thing, you know, he's got his life work in it. You know. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I like those headers. Yeah, I, I, I like consider that like he he talked a lot about the scenario that he felt that was playing out as this was happening, and I think that and it, it got me thinking. You know, it can really. It's very traumatic um, when you get, you know, violated in that kind of way. And I think that... Um, Ari, the, how you doing? Hey, Ari. It, it, it behooves us all to think about how our own personal, you know, protection, what we're doing to make sure we are secure and the people who are around us are secure. Because, um, you know, here we are in a, a little bubble. You know, we're on a little street and it's pretty quiet here. Somebody stole your catalytic converter uh, a couple years ago in the driveway. That's kind of sucks. But generally, there's a lot of things that people could just run off with, but they don't because most people are not, you know, grimy thieves. Um, but I think something like the stealing a 
a full size truck and trailer race trailer is a is a bigger thing. That's not something that a crackhead probably does because a crackhead doesn't have it. That's like there's somebody with like a large garage who probably you know stole that. You know, that's organized crime. Someone yeah. stole that. That's not just somebody that they probably followed them like from the track, stole that, and then parked it someplace they knew where they could park it and leave it sit and someone's keeping an eye on it to make sure that the police don't maybe an incredibly skilled crackhead but unlikely or you know a team of crackheads um and these are probably people you never know these people are desperate they maybe have no economic opportunities and crime does pay um like he said you know the police he talked to the police and they said oh yeah this happens a lot and you know the police know who does do these kinds of things see roma and they they don't want to be involved in it they expect you to have insurance and um you know it's probably someone local and uh or it's someone who's not local and they're already long gone by morning you know they got in the if they we're leaving. They got on the highway and, and they're eight hours away. Or it's someone local and the police do not want to get involved because they probably have friends locally and they know they know who did it if it was local. So all those kinds of things. <laughs> Steel <laughs> yeah. torque converters. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't take long. I mean, that seems like a lot of effort for a very low... I mean, how much is a used, unidentified torque converter worth on the black market these days? I think we'll give it a couple more minutes, and then uh, you can explain what happened to your thumbs again. Really? Yeah, because there were only, what, five people in here when you did that explanation? Oh. we got 17 people now. Okay. And, and Harry's asking, what did he miss? I hurt myself with a grinder, with a, with a wheel grinder. I was doing stuff. And it's a freak accident. It's not the way you would think. Thumbs, both thumbs. thumbs. She told me she cut the ends of her fingers off, and it I was felt like house. I was afraid. And she, I got really down. scared. I'm like holding them in towels, like ah, oh, my hands are hurt. She had white paper towels, and there was just a lot of blood, red from blood, and it hurt a lot because because not only were they cut, they got they they got hit the the wheel. I was on the grinding wheel, you know, and it flipped that thing through the guard. And um, how would you get the torque converter out from between the engine and the transmission? I watched him remove a transmission. It only took him seconds. He went on there and undid the bolts, took the drive shaft out, put a, a not a come along, but a, a, a winch on the tail shaft, and then just pulled it out and the transmission fell down. You know what stopped it from hitting the ground? The exhaust system. <laughs> yeah, Kim has power tools. You know, here's the deal. Working in a shop by yourself with power tools, you got to be re really careful. And she got in a hurry with something and mm. took kind of a little you bit You know, of that's shortcut. the thing even is, honestly, I don't even feel like I was like taking too much of a shortcut. It was just kind of like a... So, she explained it last time. She had a, a piece of a, a nipple, a pipe nipple. What'd you do? You cut it in half, or you? We were. She was making a T out of it because we couldn't find a T, so we're gonna weld it together. So she was grinding off the edge of it, and uh, the the uh, the piece got sucked into the grinder, went through the grinder, and then flung out at, back out at her, and that's when she got her thumbs. It ejected in a downward motion at my thumbs before I could even flinch. Yeah, like you. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. On the drone. Yeah, you never yeah. know when it would get. And you I, think you're being safe, right? I work and there's on people it. tell you, well, you should be wearing gloves, but you have to be really careful with gloves when you're working with a grinder because. No, you shouldn't. That'll have, pull you in. You shouldn't have gloves on with rotating machinery. Yeah, so. It'll suck you in. Then you'll take your thumbs all the way off. Now, um, when I finished after I was bandaged all up and I had to finish the part that I was working on, I put those nipples into the T and then put the other nipple. So I had a longer thing to hold on to. 
But what I'm really lucky of is that the way the guard is shaped, it wasn't allowed to come at my face. Like, it, it had to go da- eject in a downward motion. But it was scary. Colleen, I'm always worried with uh, Kim around any kind of rotating machine, grinders and drill presses and everything, because she's got her, she'll let her hair hang on one side, just like you know, she is there. Can... And we've got to get it tied back, because, man, that would that'd be terrible. Yeah. Oh, tie. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's older like me. He remembers when the guys in the shops wore ties. Oh, why, why did they do that? I need a drone emoji. To trigger. <laughs> yeah. A- Harry got, for those who don't know, Harry was working on his truck, and there was a friend or somebody new behind him with a, one of these small drones with a camera on it taking pictures. And Harry turned around, the guy flew the drone into his face. Probably accidentally, but still, he was too close. And, uh, yeah. And it uh, it cut him up pretty pretty badly. A quadcopter run into your face. We cannot completely, we can't keep talking about nipples. I'm sorry, it is not the word for the night. <laughs> we're well, they we're were, going to move on. They were... Tight nipples, okay. A hijab would probably be a good protection, I think. But so, what it all came down to was the picture that was on the thumbnail was the skid steer, and she was reworking the hydraulic system because we went over this. It was leaking fluid, and the tanks are cracked, and they're part of the structure. So she bought a an air tank, one of these five gallon air tanks, and took it all apart. And we put fittings on it and a place to put. Uh, I don't know if you have That's pictures That's what I forgot that. to do, is get pictures of the projects that we were I, on. I bet I have pictures of it. Do you have pictures or uh, just video? I got video. Mm. Uh, I think I can grab a screenshot, probably. Um. I could upload that. Um. Here, I'll just upload it. You talk for a few minutes. Mm-mm. Here, do you want me to get the side there? I got it. I got it. I got oh, it. All right. All I got to do is just get this picture to you somehow. Now I just got to figure this out. How do we get that picture to you? Um, we did this before. I used to... That's not the cord. What did I use? I had a cord here to put the phone to this, but I don't see it. Because it's gone. don't know what happened to it. It's on the floor. It's a floor cord. Thank you. So, let's see if I'm smart enough to do this. So we did get a lot done this week, in spite of my injury. Oh, and it was dry enough that I mowed the lawn. I mowed the whole thing. Well, we got the lawnmower out of the garage, which was a task in and of itself. And then we did get the skid loader, our little case, back together and operational. I think I put a couple of hours on it uh, with the new uh, hydraulic tank. Um, And it is still leaking, but not out of the tank. And uh, not as much as before. And... um, yeah, it was giving us a little bit of, it was putting in some work. I what I cleaned up a bunch of branches, a lot of branches, because if you put the bucket down just right, you could just skid them up, and they just start piling and piling and piling, and just push them down over the hill. So instead of picking up a lot of sticks, I was able to push a bunch of sticks out of the way. And then there is a, an empty swimming pool out to the side here, a good-sized one, uh, that would be probably three or more good level parking spots it's a 30 foot diameter yeah opposite opposite of where the garage is a nice level place um that was grown up in trees so i was taking down because there's a deck all the way around it but it's kind of dilapidated with trees growing up through it because the del campo has been a little bit neglected over the past couple decades here um and uh so i was able to slowly work my way with it did a couple, made a couple cuts with his chainsaw and pulled some things out, old posts out of the ground with this, the skitter. Um, yeah, that was, that was a lot of, a lot of effort there while he was mowing. So we got a lot done yesterday. I, I didn't do a whole lot today. I, oh, and we were out there watching the eclipse. Anybody have any interesting 
Casita del Campo. That's the house, right? Our house? Casita. Yeah, casita is a casita. Casa is a, cas, a house. Casita is like a little house. And usually they're like, just like one room and a bedroom or a bathroom, just like a little kitchen thing. And people park their motorhomes by them in, in Arizona. And that's what they call a casita there. Oh, a casita. And, I see. Uh, and they, uh, so it's like a little, just means a little house. So a casita. Okay, so how do I get this to there? People who, because I'm, I'm from Camp. Pittsburgh. How do I get that? Oh, that's up to me. I have to do that. Buff of the hill. Okay, so we're gonna show. Uh, there we go. There we are. That's what that's what she did. Was she took that air tank, and she cut holes and things and put some uh, this yellow fittings thing on the, here. Fittings on the bottom, and that's now the oil tank. It's five gallon oil tank. Probably holds four gallons. And now the the hydraulic system works quite well, because uh, it's it okay. Does. I think maybe it needs a new filter again. Yeah, they had 85% or so clips, but it was nice to be out under a yeah. blue sky without hurting for a while. We had clouds here. is 96%, and the clouds were pretty much covering them. Sometimes a heavy cloud would go by, and we had a, a, a welding hood with a, uh, that wasn't enough, with a uh, uh, the green kind of welding shield like you use for gas welding inside the welding hood. I could look right at it. It was pretty cool. I handed it to Kim and she looked at it. Just a little sliver, 90, 96%. But, you know, it wasn't all that dark. It was kind of like right after the sun went down. It's a little different because the light's coming from up above. But, oh, yeah, there you can see. And then she's got that she's got that gas can kind of uh, scabbed in there for now. But, uh, yeah, yeah it's the nice other gas it's, tank I had went down here and it didn't fit under this tank. And since this tank is more important, I mean, as long as the motor gets gas, it runs. It doesn't care what it... But this this has got several gallons of hydraulic fluid in it, so it's pretty heavy. Got cold during got the eclipse. Got cold. You know, here... It was, it was already cloudy. It was beautiful here. It was like probably, what, 70 degrees? Yeah, and, we were outside for yeah. hours getting things done for a change because it was really nice. After the eclipse especially was over, it was a really nice afternoon. Oh, yeah, and then a lot of the clouds went away. I went out and mowed for, I, I put two hours on the lawnmower, mowed everything there was in the, there's like in front of the house, which is a job that I didn't do, and then the rest, and I did the rest. Oh, look, there you are on the other side now. Oh, I'm on the other side. Oh, or that's a background. We're swapping us around. There's our dining room. I'm just trying to find a place where we are. Uh, well, since we're talking, not cold. I looked cold, at 100%, but... it was dark for four minutes. Was it all the way dark, or just like got really dim? We could, you know, ours, it was, it was plenty light enough to see colors. It was just like, and it was cloudy. So it was plenty of light enough. You could see colors and everything. It's like the sun was just below the horizon. Uh, we went to the beach about 70% noticeable temp drop. Really? 70%? Oh, about 70% of, of the eclipse noticeable temp drop. Yeah, it was probably a little cooler here. But, you know, it was so cloudy anyway. You know, I'm very moist, so, you know, the temperature probably held fairly well. So, some automatic uh, lights, oh, automatic outside lights come on at the peak. Well, that's, that's pretty good. And then my cat disappeared, not during the eclipse, but... The next morning. The, no, it was the, that morning. That morning? That morning, I went to feed the cat, and she always runs up on the porch and, no cat. That food sat there all day, and yeah, the cat was home overnight, and it was weird well, because I heard, I heard an animal meowing, and I asked him, "Is that your cat out there?" Yeah, Power Glide. Power Glide. And um, he said, "I don't know," and he went out and checked, and Power Glide was out on the porch, not meowing. Power Glide. There's so, a box. There's a heated box that I made for her, and she sleeps in there on cold nights, and then it's all covered with. Uh, moving blankets that are like insulation for it and sometimes she sleeps up on top of the moving blankets well i went out there at six in the morning and she's on top of the box sitting there you know like cats sit there she looked at me and i think i scratched her and then i came back inside i always feed her at seven so i went back out there a couple of minutes before seven she was gone 
And sometimes she walks somewhere, you know, cats have to walk somewhere sometimes. And I call her, she'll run right up there for that food. Well, she didn't come up there. And all day yesterday I called her, and all day today I called her, and no cat. So I don't know what, yeah, she looked pregnant, but she is, she's just fat. She, when, when she showed up here, she looked like she just had kittens. She's all baggy, like empty, you know. Well, you know, she could be pregnant. But she's looked like that for so long. I don't think she's pregnant, but she could be. Uh, yeah, she might have gone somewhere and had kittens. I don't know. Hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and that's a possibility. Um, I don't know. I went out looking for her earlier today, walking around, calling, just listening for any noises or, you know, cries for help or anything. Like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of open space around us, so. You'd think even if she were pregnant and had kittens somewhere, it'd be near here, and she's going to want food. She'd come back up here and get her food, but I don't know. No, no sign of her anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, we were out there. I was out there, I don't know, an hour ago calling her. Looking, I don't know. Kim went out there before that looking for her. I don't know. She was a volunteer. She just showed up here. Uh, maybe she has a new boyfriend, yeah. That's probably who was out there crying. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. That's what I said. Serenading. She's, she's uh, probably got, you know, probably in heat or something. I don't know. I don't have any idea. It's a volunteer cat. I felt bad for her. So, uh. So, um, I just kept feeding her. She's been here for a year. She drops a kid and she will look instant. Yeah, that's how she looked when she, when she got here. She looked like she's just had kittens. And my impression was somebody probably dumped her out here in the country. And she looked like she just had kittens, but there were no kittens. And she wouldn't and let, she was afraid wouldn't of let you everybody. touch her. So there's no way you could like look her over. Like it wasn't even, we didn't even really try. We were just being generous at first and well, offering some food. And... What happened was we had a plate outside with a camera, of course. We had a camera. And wild animals would come up like, like, uh, what, possums and, uh, what right. else? Uh, right. We used to feed the wild animals. animals would come up there and we put our scraps out there and the animals would eat them and, and then the camera's right there, and you get to watch the watch the animals eat the scraps. Well, then the animals quit coming around. This cat out there um, eating the scraps. So then I started buying cat food, and she just stayed around. But it got so she was uh, she let me scratch her. That when I feed her, she'd lean into me because she wanted me to scratch her on her neck, and yeah, like four or five, six scratches, and that was enough. So. That's kind of how, she was like borderline on a little bit friendly. But she liked when I brought her food. So I don't know. We'll have to see. You should take Hank off Hoobie's hand. Uh, I don't need another cat. If this one comes back, she'll be there. I'll take care of her. Otherwise, you know, every time you want to go to No Name Nationals or something, you got to find somebody to feed the cat. You know, so. I, I don't like that. What's the dart doing up there? Well, Dugster's here. Hi, Dugster. Welcome to the stream. Dugster, how you doing? I just watched a video of yours. What was it? Something Ice Man, I don't think I said hello to you as well. And Pontomaniac, I'm pretty sure I said hello to you earlier. The, I just watched a video of Dugster's. The heck was it? Ah. I don't know. Now that I, I've been clicked on a couple of Dugster's things, I get suggested something that he did in the past every day. So I've watched a bunch of... Bits and pieces of stories that he tells. He tells stories. Waylon, is it Burger? I never know how to pronounce that. Buger? Hi, Waylon. Burger, Burger. That's Burger. all I'm going to say because I don't know how to pronounce the ending part either. People didn't know how to pronounce my name. It but... looks like Burger. Yeah. Booger? No. no. That would be with <laughs> <Burger>. no R. <laughs> Bur Burger? We'll see if he uh clarifies it um so what are we sounds like burger okay yeah that's and that was my guess burger okay just the easy it's a burger with an e burger what sounds what are good. we all doing uh this summer uh for events and and whatnot to uh better secure our valuables 
Do, do, are we taking any additional precautions, See, remi being reminded that the world is a dangerous place and uh, the police don't give a shit about your personal things because they, because that's not what they do. Unless you're rich or influential in their locality. There's more money in tickets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Police yeah. don't solve crimes. That's not what they do. After uh, sorry, if you're after police... Calvin after Calvin got all this stuff stolen, there's all this shit. You know, you read the comments. You should have. You should have. You should have. Yeah, we all know it should have been done, but you know. Um... Well, that's the thing too. Is when you're when you're building a project, the value slowly, slowly accumulates. You know what I mean? Like if you have an old car and you don't have full coverage insurance on it, right? Because it's old. It's got high mileage. Whatever, right? And you suddenly realize that you have to put a transmission in it and you spend, I don't know, how much is a transmission? Oh. 2500 3000 bucks you spend on a transmission. All of a sudden, the vehicle goes from being worth, maybe it was only worth $1,500, and you're like, it's not worth paying all this high coverage insurance. But now I just took my $1,500 and put you know, $3,000 worth of effort into it. Now it's, it's, it's definitely not replaceable for anything less than four to $5,000. But I don't have full coverage on it. Something happens to it, and like everybody's insurance, like, insurance. "You should have." It's like, well, insurance yeah. company's still gonna say it's only worth six hundred bucks. Right. Well, no, because you have receipts, except they were in the car that just got stolen. So, so you know, people say you should have had this Apple. What do they call them? Apple Air, Air tags, tags yeah. and they should have had. Yeah, they should have had a pack of Rottweilers in the front seat. Yeah, um, or you should have had security. Somebody should have been watching it, which just. After a long weekend at the track, just what everybody wants to do. Well, and like he said, he was dead tired. He didn't even want to move the truck over by well, his dad. And the, you know, obviously the um, they're gonna have security cameras at the uh, place where he was staying, the and they hotel. assured him that they did have it. They said they had security cameras when he went to ask for the the uh, to to see the 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 video. They uh, they did. They told him they didn't. They really didn't have security cameras. So, of course, there's a lot of people think the whoever was behind the desk is the one that alerted the... The people who came in and stole from yeah, them, which is, that. now, which is the dangers of leaving your home turf uh, when you travel uh, with valuables, you know, it, it is, it's very dangerous, so... So, how many of you out there have specialty insurance? Um, Drab says you need to have that. Kim has one car that's on... Uh, it's not her standard insurance. My um, dart is on classic automotive insurance, yeah. but I don't have full coverage. So if it were stolen or uh, something like that, the only way that I would get anything is if the other vehicle was at fault and damaged me. But well, when we get the, when it's we really get, just liability. When we get get it back half, that's the point we, we need to put, uh, you know, insurance at a stated value. And... Uh, yeah, because that car will be worth more. Because we have, we'll have a lot in that thing. Maybe there, you know, it it leads me to think things like I can't really own much of a V. Like this is why we can't have nice things. Like right now, everything we own is junk. But if I had anything that was truly valuable, I really I can't I can't afford to cover it. I can't I can't afford to just say this is what my thing is worth. And if anything happens to it here. Like, I, I can't. And I, can't, I really can't afford to be making claims on my insurance because my insurance company will drop me if I make too many claims. Yeah, and then, like, security cameras. Right? They're going to see some people working on drive off. They're not going to be able to figure out who that was. Yeah. Just sickening. So the I world don't... is a dangerous place. Um, cover your ass as best you can. And... Um, you know, when you see somebody get into a situation like this where they get robbed, um, you know, show some, a little bit of, of kindness. Is, is you just cannot take every measure all the time to protect everything. It doesn't really work. You know, you end up throwing a lot of money at something that's diminishing returns for your own protection. Yeah, cars must be finished and painted. See, and there's a lot of, a lot of cars that... They're not painted, and that's why they're cool, because people like them like that, you know. So, I don't know. 
Well, the other thing is, is um, I have had policies on cars where, you know, it states um, un unequivocally that the car will not be used for exhibition purposes or uh, purposes of exhibitions of speed or anything like that. So, like, you know, like, I can't really, you can't really insure a race car as, 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 an, as a car. You have to have insurance of a, a yeah. Typically at the Mopar Nationals in Ohio, there's there's always one or two that come up missing from the hotels. Yeah, just, yeah get vicious dogs. That's what I said. Put three or four Rottweilers in the front seat. I mean, dogs really aren't much of an obstacle. They make noise, but unless you are ready to respond to noise at a on a second's note, like you're telling me that they came up, pulled up in front of this hotel in the middle of the night, and, well, and stole that big. Rag and no one saw anything. You get quiet dogs that bite hard. <laughs> you know, just chew into mm. them. I, I'm not going to say what happens when you do that. I, I know that it's a, th a thing you can try and do, but, you know, that's there's no guarantees to that. And then someone has to keep a close eye on the dog. Right. You put your dog in danger trying to make it your security system. And air tags only help if you have a way to go and retrieve the stolen because now you're you're walking into the into their uh, into their uh, yeah enemy lines and such. So, but stay together as a group. Um, get somebody to uh, that you trust to uh, you know watch your things. Stay at a hotel where you know they actually do have security. Cain Corso Dogs. What is that? I don't know. If anyone knows an app developer, let me know. I have an idea. Learn how to be an app developer. Yeah, I robot dogs with guns. <laughs> there you go. AI. Yeah, I don't trust AI for anything. Or this chat GBT and it's like half fiction. <laughs> I'm that person that if I had an alarm, it would just keep going off and annoying people so that when it really did go off, everyone would ignore it anyways. Everybody ignores car alarms anyway because they do go off. If you're in a big parking lot, there's a car alarm going. Is anybody paying attention to it? Nope. Just the person that's trying to shut it off with their key fob. So, boy, it's just, it's since this happened, it, 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 you know, we've watched the videos and it, it just, it really, it, it makes you think it, it's, I feel very insecure and I, I can, I feel like a, a empathetic um, response to how violating and traumatic that kind of thing is. Cana Sorso, Italian master. Oh, it's, a, it's a big dog. Man, a couple of times when I was working on cars, <clears throat> there was a woman brought a Dodge van in. I did some of the radiator or the air conditioning, don't remember which. But she was asking about uh, rotating the tires around. And I said, I'll do that for you while it's sitting here. So when I got finished doing whatever the cooling system work was, I walked around the back and opened up the door. <laughs> and there's two uh, pit bulls back there. Man, they didn't like me opening that door. <laughs> I was going to go get the spare out. Like, oh, man, I opened it, slammed the door. Call her up. She goes, oh, just go in there and get the tire. They won't hurt you. Like, no. <laughs> I'm going in there with two pit bulls in your van. Come down here and help me get the spare tire out of there. She did. So I don't like mean dogs. I like nice dogs. They actually weren't too bad. Wag but their tail and huh? eat treats and let you pet them. If there are Those two are dogs, nice doggies. If there are two pit bulls in the back of a van that are growling at me when I open up the door. I'm not going to reach in and get the spare tire. I'm going to no. let them help me with it. <sighs> Italian Mastiff. That's got to be a big dog. Is everybody's grass growing? Shop Cat Industries. 
Oh, so they, Shop she, Cat, that's a horrible story. Thanks oh, for no. sharing that. That's not good. Well, these things happen. See, these are the unfortunate circumstances that can arise when you have to have to have guard dogs, unfortunately. My my brother, when he's about, he's probably about seven or eight years old, went in somebody's backyard. It's where friends were, and we played in those backyards and everything. But he went in there by himself. And they had a dog in there, it was a little mutt, and that dog chewed him all up one arm, just like, you know, like 10, 15 bites up his arm, punctured his arm all up, really bloody mess. And uh, that dog also bit their mailman one time and bit the meter reader one time. And then my friend's parents had his boss and his wife over and the dog bit his wife. And that was it. They had that dog put down. They had enough. Dog was just too mean. Oh, I don't want to talk about mean dog stories. So, all right. A lot more people around drive That's... around with dogs nowadays. Dogs are really good companions. Loyal, they're 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 good for de depression. They are good for security. Their dogs are really. I saw really a dog wonderful. actually driving the other day. I don't understand the dog driving. Although, did you ever see the, the Muppet movie? Oh no, that's a bear, Fozzie Bear. Never mind. There's a lot of dogs that sound mean that aren't. Most dogs are pretty friendly. But a lot of them will growl at you if they don't know you, but they're still, that's probably the worst thing they'll do. That's Remember the old thinking. story, man bites his dog. Yeah. When my brother got bit, that's what the insurance said. Well, if, you're, if your son had bit the dog, it'd cover, but insurance doesn't cover because the dog bit your son. <laughs> I remember that. Happy stuff? Well, yeah, because we're talking about Positive, dogs. Positive, encouraging we're stuff. We're talking about dogs and cars getting stolen and all this kind of stuff. Did anyone get raptured? I guess if you were here, you wouldn't be able to say that you did get raptured during the eclipse, but man's best friend got raptured? Perhaps. Niblack's car got raptured. I like dogs. I've had some good dogs. I had an Australian Shepherd that's a really good dog many, many years ago. I had a dog here that uh, was part Black Lab, part, part Pointer. He's a 100-pound dog, and he's a friendly dog. But he got old and he's gone. But I, I just don't want the responsibility anymore. What kind of car were they driving in that? That thing looks kind of like a Studebaker. Looks like a, like about a 50s, early 50s Studebaker maybe. Spring is here. or coming. Yo, yeah, oh, it's here. It's here in Tennessee. It sure looks like a 50s. Like a, yeah, look at it. It's about a 1950. One, I can't tell what the grill looks like as soon as you get the grill done. It's a 51 Studebaker. There you go. There's Fozzie Bear driving the Studebaker. That's happy, right? Oh, jeez. I got a mouse in the wrong place. Boom, boom, boom. 170 boom, pound boom. Mastiff. Oh, man. Well, that, that dog I had was 100 pounds. That was enough. And, you know, that dog wanted to get up in a seat and drive with me, and I couldn't. Uh, uh, I couldn't allow that dog to sit in my lap while I was driving. <laughs> yeah, it's a bullet nose Studebaker. Yeah, the the way you can tell the difference, in 1950 had two little grills down below, and they were kind of more oval than that. And the 51, the grill had like a little uh, cutout, like a little U cutout that went around the bullet nose. That's the only way I could tell the difference between a 50 and a 51. And the 51 uh, did not have a divider in the windshield, and the 50 did. So... Uh, yeah, I like I like bullet nose Studebakers. I like them a lot, but you know, where do you find one? There, you, that was I'm old, and those things were built four years before I was born. So you know, and they look really good without the front bumper on them. So most people, 
not most people. A lot of people take the front bumper off and it really looks good. Muppets. I don't know much about Muppets. You know about Muppets? Yeah. Yeah. See, there's another picture of Studebaker down below that one. See that one that doesn't have the bullet? Oh, it's the same Studebaker. It's directly below. Which one? What are we, what are we doing? Directly below the, the one that... Directly below the one you're showing. It's in... Down here? Yeah. That one. See that one? The grill's got those little notch cutouts that go around the bullet. That's a 51. Oh, and the okay. 50 did not have those little notches. They were just more oval-looking grills, and the 50 had a divided windshield. So that's how you can tell a 50 from a 51. That was a Studebaker's out for restoration. It was out when we were at the museum last time. They had a sign up. Studebaker Starlight Coupe. Yeah, and then the 53 to me was the beautiful Studebaker that was way ahead of its time. And, uh, geez, my father's gone now, but I, I wish I could ask him because he bought a, he bought a new car in 53. He bought a 53 Ford. But since then, I've thought, man, I'd like to ask him, did you ever look at the Studebaker? <laughs> see if he, see what he thought. Because it's, uh, it's such a, the 53 was, look up Frankenstude. Frankenstude. I remember that name from somewhere. Why do we have Frankenstude? The hawks are nicely understated, not overall. Oh. Yeah, and the 53 was really the basis for the hawk, but it was not a hawk. They didn't use the hawk name, I think, until 55 or 56. Frankenstude. Oh, yeah, that thing. Oh, yeah. See, that's got the 51 grills. And I'm in the way. And it's... uh. Yeah, it's really something. Yeah, it's like chopped every which direction or probably built from scratch. Yeah, look at that thing. Yeah, can you imagine <laughs> driving that around? Can show US something. Frankenstein. Is that what we're showing right now? Mm -hmm. This is what came up. I don't know if we have the right one. Panamaniac. Do we have the I right think one? We just are delayed from the comments sometimes. Yeah. It always seems to take a few seconds to get them to come through here. Perfectly so perfect 90s. In 90s. You think that's 90C? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It could be. I don't know what the current current custom cars look like. More elaborate. They are ever so you know, more I elaborate. I think people like to just take like 400 grit sandpaper and sand the paint off and set them outside and rust and then clear coat them. No, 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 no. That was a couple years ago. This year it's uh, carbon fiber. It's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. We need carbon. We need more. We're not doing a carbon, carbon fiber. Not doing a carbon fiber car. What is that? I can hear me in the other room saying carbon fiber. I was wondering what that noise is in the other room. Did, <laughs> Did you, you leave, leave the stream on? You left the sound. Oh, it's probably me. It's it my... is you because my computer's right here. Computer. So we hear carbon fiber coming from the back room. Looks like straight eighties right out of there. So carbon fiber. Yeah, did you look at the car show stuff? Any watch any of the car show stuff from this year? Carbon fiber is the carbon fiber drive shaft, carbon fiber wraps, There's the whole thing. So many different kind of carbon fiber tubes. There's unidirectional, and there's bidirectional, and a lot of them will, will kind of twist or bend. You really have to have the right structure. Tell me more. Oh, it's just Oh, tell me more where, about. Where I tell work. me more about the bicarbon fiber. Well, there's unidirectional and bidirectional, and then there's unidirectional that has some bidirection around it, so it won't split, and all these things. And I saw somebody build a. You know, it was a project. Some of the smartest people in the world built this bidirectional carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber spar that wouldn't. Wouldn't hold the weight of the airplane. Oh, one G. That's so good. Are you gonna? You're doing something. I'm doing something. You keep talking about the carbon fiber. Where are you going with my hard drive? I don't know what you're doing. Well, it's oh man, I need to stop with the innuendo. You're walking around. What are you doing? I have stuff to do. Just you. Well, talk. You're walking around in front of the camera and you're sticking my 
sticking my hard drive in some other computer and I don't know what I would never do that without consent made. yeah a, a company offers a 68 charger body made mostly of carbon fiber yeah that'd be interesting seeing that doesn't have to be you know unless you're building a structure you know like a drive shaft or a wing spar or a car frame or something the direction of the fibers is not nearly as critical but it still makes a difference. And then there's Company carbon office. fiber. There's carbon fiber that looks beautiful, and there's carbon fiber that's completely out of carbon fiber. Now, what's the point? Why not make it up? Why make it out of carbon fiber? What's the advantage? Is it why would you be advantaged to? So you could say that. So you could show it. To just people. so you could say it. Now it's a totally and they, lay, and they lay all the weave up so it all mid twenty twenties kind of car if it's made completely out of carbon fiber. Next year, everyone will have all carbon fiber, everything. So next year, what's the big deal going to be? If carbon fiber is now, what's going to be the next newest thing? I don't know, but we take so long to do things that we might as well just skip the carbon fiber um, because it'll be over by the time we get there. I actually did like, oh, like a 66. I thought you were going to say I actually did a 66. I actually did like a 66. Charge your body and car on fire. Those are so heavy, but I love them. Well, <laughs> yeah, I painted. <clears throat> Most of the carbon fiber I worked on did end up painted because it was had to be, um, UV it protection. had to be painted. Yeah, and it has to be UV protected and all that, and the resins are not, you know, it's, yeah, it's light and strong if you do it right. If you don't do it right, oh, what are all those? That's a bunch of stickers or something. Oh, well, yeah, we were talking about stickers, and I so I come up with some... I didn't invent any of these designs, but they're all just sort of conceptual sort of... Uh, what's it called? Inspiration for conceptual art. So what kind of sticker do I need? I need one that's like my... What's that thing called? My Would you guys like to help us sort of come up with some sticker ideas? 3D, well, printing, 3D printing parts? Yeah, well, the other thing that people did a lot in the new most recent car shows was uh, they used like the... CNC powered like the water jet cutters and stuff like that to cut like complex designs um, in wheels and uh, suspension parts and stuff like that. Stuff that would just be blunt plate steel like they cut all these designs out of it because they can. It was a, at a car show two weeks ago, a guy with a Tesla, a Tesla got so angry and combative because he did not when a trophy they had to call the cops. Oh, with a Tesla. Because <laughs> he thought he should win because it's a Tesla. They make a carbon fiber Tesla. Isn't carbon fiber like conductive? You got to be careful. The whole car might short out. Man. What do they have? Like 800 volts in the drive motors? The guy with the Tesla got so angry. Oh, yeah. That's... Yep. Next year, body's made from uh, recycled water bottles. Yep, water jets are cool. Yeah, we we were gonna get a water jet at one place. I, I was trying to talk the boss in to get one, and then, well, you know what we did? It was way back when. Uh, ah, who were the guys in New York? The the um, choppers, American choppers. They uh, they uh, they had that water jet that was in a uh, cabinet that closed. So I went to that company and got a demonstration and everything, and they were cutting, they were cutting titanium with that. They were cutting bricks. They were cutting meat, you know, like like a butcher would cut. It was amazing, and I really wanted to get one of those things in the shop. But then it was, I asked what the power requirements were, and it was a hundred amps at four hundred eighty volts. Gulp! <laughs> that's gonna make them. That's gonna make the electric meter turn. So. When we looked at it, we decided we were going to have to take in other work other than ours and hire probably a salesman to go out and sell jobs for that and, and make that thing run 24 hours a day. And we just decided not to do it. Instead, we sent stuff to somebody else that had a water jet machine, and they cut out all our wing ribs and things that we wanted done with a water jet. And uh, the thing I really like about water jets, we used to laser cut a lot of the sheet metal, but you get finished and you have a little rough edge, that's been overheated, so that's where cracks start, and then they propagate from the edge. But with a water jet cutter, 
it's already deburred. You don't have to take any of that off. All the work's done for you. And most of the water jet places and the, the uh, laser cut places are they're competitive pricing. So we started going with the water jets because we didn't have to deburr anything afterwards. Uh, those stickers. Yeah, see, I have one. I want you that avatar I have with the stupid mustache. I kind of want to use that as a sticker, just shrink it down and then. Oh, put remember, on the outside. remember I was showing you um, a little yeah, while ago? Yeah, that's a lot of power. That yeah. is pretty high demands. And like like here, I don't think we even have that at the poles, so we couldn't even get that. Oh, no, we We'd have to be in an industrial park to be able to get that kind of power. Right next to my office in that place, we had a uh, couple of CNC machines. Uh, they were mill, vertical mills. And they were 480 volts, but I don't know what the amperage was. 100 amps than, pretty high. Well, it wasn't that high. But yeah, the, that's pretty high. But 480 <laughs> volts, 480 volts at 100 amps, that's, holy crap, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot. But I'm we were talking with, about, have you ever watched? I am, I am not real familiar with EDM. I've seen the results of it. We used to get some things EDM, but I've never watched it. I've never watched it. I know you want to talk, and I'm talking no, about No, is EDM, machines. isn't that music? It's like a wire like thing that can we used to have these little things that were cut out little stainless sheet metal things it was for the other part of the business it wasn't the aircraft but they cut those out with the edm yeah she's bored with my no no I was, I was, she wants to move on to no something more important like stickers no <laughs> see i was really into manufacturing for so much of my life that it was it was a big deal so for 15 years of my life, it was manufacturing. The next 15 years of my life was flight testing. And, you know, uh, they were both very interesting, you know. Yeah, EDM, I never got into it much. But I did see the results from it. It was pretty interesting stuff. What is that? With, uh, right with the... I don't know what you're, you're over there picking at stuff. I don't know what you're I was trying at. to figure out how to show these pictures, and I don't really remember. I can't look up a band called Pendulum. Get their albums to listen, especially on Silico. <clears throat> what are you uh, looking to see? I'm watching her going through menus and things. What is that? Oh, you're doing something. Sorry. She's up there naming files and things on the screen over top of us. Kim, look up a band called Pendulum. Do their okay, albums. So I'll, listen, I'll... we're not going to listen now. We're not going to listen now. Put on your headphones. <laughs> electronic dance music is like... Man, when I was in Russia, that's all there was. Electronic, there electronic dance music. Um... So what are we doing? We're looking at, oh, that's old. Look at that. That's crazy. That's old uh, ELO, yeah. I know who ELO is. ELO is great. That's probably old. I don't even know when that was from. All I know is I'm old, so all the music I like is ancient. So what's the story on that? Um, I just, I like Okay, so uh, the, the, the Del Campo part of the name, I feel like it has a vibe that we would want to pull stuff from. And so I was looking at things that made me think of, you know, the West or Southwest area. And I, to me, that's where that comes from. So I, I don't know. I was just like it's, looking it is, at things. It is Spanish. It is some ideas. Mexican Spanish. Del Campo. Um. So I, I was just, I was looking through and I saw designs and things that made me, that's. You're looking at all the Arizona stuff. Yeah. This one, I like this Bro, one. Jim. Ah, color TV refrigeration. There's an Arizona. H, I don't know what the H is, a hospital or something. I don't know. I love most all music. Paul I Jamaris, nice. <laughs> Jamaris, okay. If you can overcome the jealousy, it's definitely... Um, I like this eagle. This is definitely a cool thing. Isn't that eagle awesome? I guess. And the eagle. Arriba. Bye. Okay, sorry. Oh, I like this eagle better. Check it out. It's kind of, it has a, um, 
native. I, I don't know. I, I think this is less that's like, that's a less universal, a more of a. Um, I don't know what the name of the particular vibe is, but I kind of thought that that was pretty cool. Where's the thing I use now? What's that? That, Your little... that little avatar I have. Well, yeah, we already have that. And I just shrink it down a little bit and put both the... Yeah, I want to have some stickers so we get the no-name nationals we can have some stickers. I like What's that, the UFO cow? What the heck? It's like, they're, you know what they do to cows. <laughs> My wife and I looked at Burning Man for the first time in our lives. Our jaws did drop. Talking about crazy art construction. Yeah, you know who you watch is uh, Wonder Hussy. Uh, channel called Wonder Hussy and she goes to uh, she lives out there in the desert Death Valley but she goes to uh, she goes to all these little desert things and of course Burning Man is her big event every year Wonder Hussy's kind of fun to watch because I'm a desert rat myself so I I, uh, I look at that that's a New Mexico highway sign from some time back Oh, I didn't like this one as much as the other one. I think this one looks weird. It's got weird feet. I'm very particular about the shape of feet. State Road, New Mexico. It's a state road sign from New that Mexico. That almost looks like a railroad crossing, but it's not. Uh, so this is not real interesting. What isn't? I don't like looking at these. Oh. But that's all right. I don't know. No, that's fine. We'll let you talk then. No, I just uh, just uh, don't like those stickers. <laughs> well, I'm looking for ones that you like. I like this the way they, they made the old signs in that shape. It's very... I remember seeing stuff like that. Welcome to New Mexico. It says peppers. I've seen that many times. I like the, the, the sun with the stripes and the such. Look up. Just look up Arizona front plate. Really? Arizona okay. front get license out plate, something like that. It's a decorative plate. Arizona front decorative plate, something like that. I got a star on my car and one on my chest. Pistol. <laughs> I don't know all this. I would better drive slowly. They headed my way. I'll do my best. To Which one? This one? Myself. That one. Okay, when I first moved to Arizona, I bet half the cars had one of those on it because Arizona is a. What happened? Arizona Arizona is a single plate state, so people bought these and put them on the front of their car, except the star was very gold, not orange looking like that. And of course I had one, and that was the thing to do for a long time. And now in Arizona, you still see one every once in a while. But that was a, that's the Arizona state flag. So people had that on their, on their own, instead of a front license plate, had in a front plate position. I like the old Arizona license plate, the one that's two, the second one over, the red one, the reddish, uh, brick red colored one that's there. This one? Yeah. Oops, what happened? I don't know. It didn't like that. Nope, it didn't like that. So that's the Arizona plate I like, but those are gone. Because it was kind of just, just a, one color, and it was kind of brick red, and it just looked all business. It won't let us see it. It won't let we us see it. pay money. We have to pay money to see that. Mm -hmm. Yellow is awesome. Yep. Remember we can't yellow? play music. They'll, they'll remember, shut us down. Do you remember yellow? I don't know who you mean by yellow. The electric light orchestra. Oh, it's an orchestra. Yellow. They were. Orchestras are nice. They were great, but they were probably 70s. I don't know. 1932 Arizona copper license plates are best. I have one in my collection. You know the new, the new uh, historical vehicle plates in Arizona are copper license plates. Really? They're still copper. Yep. Like actually made of copper or copper colored? I think they're made of. When you pick them up, they're heavy. Really? Look. Uh, that would I, be expensive. Look, and you probably have to pay for it. Look up uh, Arizona um, historical vehicle plate. Oh. Well, you had one there. Back, back out of that. I don't know if you can back out of that or scroll up or something. Off to the far right. That one right there. 
That's what they look like now. Okay. We can't look at it. It'll take us to eBay. We can't look at it. Okay. Mine is solid copper. Yeah, the new ones are solid copper as well. You see it right there. That's what they look like. Except that one's that one's kind of beat up. It's got patina. But they, when you pick up a historical vehicle plate from Arizona, they're hefty feeling. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, th I think that's how they are still. I think you get new ones. Yeah, see, that says uh, 77, but they look just like that when you get new ones. There's one right behind you, Kim, that says down by your uh, by your right armpit. This one? Oh, that still says 77. Okay, yeah. I Maybe it's because it's the 77th state. All right, all right. We had a president. You used to think there were there were fifty seven states. Uh, I thought there was fifty seven flavors of ketchup. Well, he said, he actually in a speech one time said all fifty seven states. But I'm not going to get into who that was. I'm sure he misspoke. The presidents are so dumb. <laughs> uh, every time I think I've heard it all, I hear something else. I sell a copper. That's a easy to steal in copper. Plates than a converter. Oh, I love them. Copper. They, yeah, steal a copper plate and melt it down. And I was working on a radiator shop one time. A friend of mine came in. And he's not real mechanically kind, inclined kind of guy and doesn't really understand torches and everything. And I'm working. I got a torch in one hand, solder in the other hand. And I'm going along. And he goes, he says to me, he sets a quarter down on my bench. And he goes, I bet you can't melt that quarter. I reached over the torch and went, Bloop, turned into a ball in about a second. I, then I went on working. He goes, you melted my quarter. <laughs> yeah, you told me to. He didn't think it was going to melt. Oh, man. Easy to steal. God, let's see. My plate came from a guy that used to live in Arizona. He found it. Oh, roof repair. Yeah. Well, it won't rust. Yeah, Heinz 57. I went to the Heinz Museum. You lived in that city. Mm -hmm. I went to the Heinz Museum one time. Just to go in there. It's a nice museum. You know what they had in there? They had a 36 Ford sta made out of stainless. I've seen two of them. One there and one in the... There's a museum in Cleveland. All stainless, 36 Ford, and both of them had a lot of miles on them. And they were perfect, you know. Just, they didn't rust. <laughs> well, they're not as good as the Cybertruck. Cybertruck rusts. I don't know what they're. I don't know what uh, alloy they're using, but they're getting rust on those things. That's sad, because anybody want to pile on? We can all make fun of Cybertrucks. The DeLoreans. They're complete didn't rust. trash, the and everyone knows it. The DeLoreans didn't rust. The thirty six Fords didn't rust. TV uh, screens that can melt pennies. I don't know about that. I'm confused too. My my computer back there is barking at us. I can tell when I get too loud. Yeah, that's me yelling. I left it. Shouting at the internet. I left that. I left that laptop on in my bedroom, and it's. He's trying you know, to. He's trying to build up our view hours artificially by watching. I didn't even think. <laughs> go in there and comment. Uh, yeah, go in there. It doesn't count the view if you don't comment every once in a while. I gotta go shut it off. Is what I gotta do. Yeah, okay. It's telling me we're yelling. I can hear me. You yelling got you there. got the you got the hot seat here. Okay. Hi everybody. I was looking at pictures. I was trying to make designs for stickers. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. I tried to get him to do that. Nope. Won't do it. Won't do it. We go out, I'm trying to do stuff in the garage. All he wants to do is uh pull out the tractor and mow the grass. Alcoa made aluminum bodies. Pierce Arrow. So Pierce Arrow made all aluminum car for the president of Alcoa. Yeah, I've been in the Alcoa, one of the Alcoa um, plants. Um, it is, you have to have a security clearance to get in there and you have to take a safety course to even be on site because they, I was near, not even inside, but near within range of the liquid metals facility. Um, and if you have ever seen a liquid metals explosion, you'll understand that you just don't want to be anywhere near there because uh, a small mistake will cause you to be um, unalived.
Oh, it looks gold because they lacquered it. Yeah. Okay, what's this? Comment see, from the bedroom. <laughs> see, I was there. I turned the sound down to the little sticker. Turbo little Tom had a sticker made for Easter by his daughter. What what kind of sticker? Hey, where, where are you here? Oh, my daughter. Was it a logo sticker or what is it an Easter sticker? Let's see here. It's not painted, but the black is. Yeah. Lacquer does that. Roy Bailey, hello. Yeah, I, I kind of know what I want to do for a sticker. I don't know. We got to do some for you, too. You got to have stickers. In Levi's Backyard Garage, last year had these little rubber uh, wristband things. And when we got there, I was at the front gate doing whatever I'm checking in. And somebody handed me one of those. So I thought it was something official from No Name National. So I'm wearing this thing like two days. And then I looked at it one time and it, oh, I saw, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Dylan. Oh, Dylan. Dylan, Levi. Give him away. And I'm going, wait a minute, what is this thing? And I looked at it and it says Levi's back to our garage. <laughs> I thought it was something I had to wear during the whole No Name Nationals. And it was something he was giving away. I want to get some of those and give them to everybody. Tom, that's a very thoughtful gift. That's really cool Turbo that she did that for you. Beard and glasses. Turbo Tom, what are you bringing this year? Are you bringing the old car? Look up uh, I'll, I'll get it. Lens. You, talk, you talk to them. Fresnel lens melting granite. Oh, man. Do you know what Fresnel lens is? Fresnel? Well, it looks like Fresnel, but it's I think it's Fresnel. But it's, it's like a magnifying glass, except it's machined in like grooves and grooves and grooves. And they used them for, originally, I think, for uh, uh, lighthouses, I think. You don't know what you're bringing yet. Well, it was sure cool to see you there with the, with the old car. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at it focused in one spot. Oh, you know what? That does look like the screen on one of those big projection screen TVs. I know. Oh, I never even thought of that. Oh. Why? Well, what else do you got, Tom? What other well, vehicles he, that you might bring? He Did works we decide on. What we're he taking? works on. He works on brand new Mopars, and then he has that old car. <laughs> he brought the old one. It's pretty cool. He brought the old one. Hey, when, when are you, Turbo Tom, when are you going to get that electric charger? <laughs> you guys going to get electric chargers? Have they, are they giving you, like, clinics and stuff, how to work on them? I'm curious about this stuff. How like how are they preparing the uh, the techs, the technicians for working on those? Or are the electric they? chargers? I'm confused. What kind of things? Electric chargers. This isn't like a device that sits on a table. It's a, it's a car that's a Dodge Charger. Oh, 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 okay. And it's electric. The electric charger. So I guess you're going it to call it an electric charger. It doesn't just use a charger. standard one? An electric charger, I guess, could be a thing that you oh, set. Oh, the electric and, charger. And you hook it to your battery to it. charge the battery. I get it. Or it could be an electric charger that you it. I thought that you were talking about a Dodge that uses an electric charger, but you literally mean a, a Dodge charger that is electric. I, I'm I'm a little slow sometimes. Okay. Maybe. Found a couple of T-coils in a T-store Saturday. A couple of T-coils, T-coils. What are T coils? T coils. Tesla coils? Oh. Okay, so what are we gonna we gotta finish? We're still right where we were last week because we didn't work on the cars. We worked on the uh we you. Well I worked on it too, the skid steer. I mean it was important. It needed, and we, we made progress with and, it. And uh T buzz coil. Oh, okay. And we worked on I, I started cleaning the shop up. There's heaps of crap everywhere in that I shop. I had it clean. But then, then you made, made it dirty. Again. Kim works in a spot and then leaves the pile. And she works in another spot and leaves the pile. Once there's too many and piles, I'm, I'm I do going around trying to clean. I'm like, all these greasy, grimy piles. I'm like, there's no tools in the toolbox. So, yeah, we I spent some time working on that, but it's not cleaned up. I got the mower out and, man, I put two hours on the mower out there getting the uh, grass cut and you cut a bunch of uh, 
branches, dead branches and stuff that we cut off trees that had fallen down. And you're out there with skid steer working. So we did all that, but we got to get back to the cars. So we got to rebuild the, we rebuilt the left-hand side of the front end on the Valiant. We got to rebuild the right-hand side, put new bushings, and then get the wheel line. Front end suspension work, yeah. And I just may buy some wheel alignment equipment so we can do it because it won't be as nice as what I used to work with, but it'll be similar. I'll have to do it on the floor and level the car on the floor, but that's okay. I think I'd like to have that capability because I think you take a 72 down, Valiant to a wheel alignment shop, they're going to be clueless. They're not going to know what to do. And to me, I could... Excuse me, I could show Kim like in minutes how to read the gauges and what to do, and she could probably do the alignment faster than I could. And uh, so we'll just, uh, um, I don't know, we, we got to get that done. Our shop isn't big enough to work on EVs. Your shop isn't big enough to, what do you have to do, stand back? <laughs> get on from that thing. It's like lightning. <laughs> Man. So what do you do when you get one in and it doesn't work? It's sell them a new one. Pushmobile? Just sell them a new one. Disposable uh, cars. Yeah, I don't know. You're a Chrysler dealer. Aren't you a Chrysler dealer or a Dodge dealer? Don't you have to take on the new cars? But you do sell last year's models? I don't know. Um, see, I had my first radiator shop across the street and up two blocks was it? Uh, a Chrysler Plymouth dealer and they used to have the uh, clinics all the time and all mechanics from around the town were, were invited to go to those clinics and I used to go to them I remember going to the first one of those clinics when they first introduced the uh, lean burn systems and sitting there going oh 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 because there was a computer and it was just crazy and uh, but we used to go to those clinics so I assume I don't know why I assumed this is that Chrysler would still have clinics for these new cars. So, but it sounds like maybe they aren't going to do that. Maybe they'll bring people around, that, like Tesla, where they take people to the car. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure that car is going to sell real well. Uh, time will tell. Everybody's going to want one. It's going to be the Nesbeck. What? You, you just like it because it's got a, a donut button. Donut mode. It's yeah. got a button you push to do donuts, and then it automatically. Now you have does to pay a subscription donuts. fee oh, you every have to, month to be able to do donuts. You sold two hybrids. What are hybrids that you have? What are hybrids that Chrysler has? I know they have the all electric charger that's coming out. I don't know. Do what's they have hybrid. a hybrid charger as well, or are they? I thought they were all electric, or. Oh, I don't know. I know that the the charger's supposed to have an inline six cylinder. They're going to call it six pack later. If you gave me, gave me, handed, here you go, a brand new charger. I couldn't afford the taxes and the insurance on the damn thing. I can't own anything new. I, I mean, I, I am completely not the person to ask about this. I can't wait till Rich Rebuilds gets one. Rich yeah. Rebuilds, he's an electric car guy, but he's also a gasoline engine car guy. He's a sharp dude. He's up in, he's got a shop in Amesbury, Massachusetts, and he does YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel, but he built a, a an S, a Tesla S, with a uh, an LS Chevy in it, and I think, uh, oh, what's his name has Tesla it? with a Chevy in it. Yeah, it's got an LS up front. The thing is fast. Where can you do that? Where, he, in New York. I don't. He did it, and then he's you're he's, not allowed to. He do that. sold That's it against the law. He sold it, or he gave it to Someone somehow. Should call the police. Somehow make that man take that car off the road before it destroys <laughs> the environment. Somehow Tavares ended up with it, so Tavares has this thing down there and they're it's just got stock uh everything on that ls is stock so now they're going over the uh over all the electronics to remap the the injection and all that so that's going to be a fast tesla all my cars are hybrid thanks for stopping in colleen rubber. we'll see you next week oh you gotta go okay colleen take care um, i bored colleen to tears oh, that poor woman Wrangler and Pacifica are hybrids, are they? Well, I didn't know that. A Wrangler, who would want a, a Wrangler uh, hybrid? I didn't even like Wranglers. I had no idea. The guy I worked for had a, bought a Wrangler. And 
he had a lot of vehicles. So one day he sends me on an errand. He goes, just just take just take that Wrangler and throws me the keys. And I got in it. That's got to be the most uncomfortable thing I ever drove. <laughs> That's horrible. But I guess it looks cool. A Pacific, he also had a Pacifica. And a Pacifica is nice to drive, I guess. I didn't really want one. But what you looking up? Uh, Wrangler Hybrid. Oh, my God. 50 grand. 50 grand. Oh, that's so cheap. Let's go get one. How many old cool cars could we buy? You buy cars for like 300 bucks. So divide divide that by 300. See how many cars we could buy. I you know, See, but if we started buying ball. cars that actually ran, it would cost a lot yeah. more. You buy, you buy all these cars that don't run. Well, the great thing is, is we save on insurance. I don't have to have insurance. I don't have to register. I don't have to pay wheel tax. I don't have to buy gas. I don't have to do nothing for them. They just sit there. I like looking at them. <laughs> we need the skid skier to pull them around. To move them around and so they don't up, sink into the ground. Pick them up and move them around. Yeah. And I use the skid steer to take the air compressor over to them so I can feel the tires back up when they go flat. Yeah, you know. <laughs> skid steer. <laughs> Yeah, skid steer to move the compressor around. <laughs> All right, so I have come to terms with my hoarding. No, okay, I have not come to terms with it. Is Adam Culbertson. Albert Culbertson. That I have reached a point How you doing? of hoarding. Now, that does not mean I'm going to do anything, because I think that that would be acknowledgement would mean I was going to do anything. But I have stopped buying more. I have not bought a new car for my, how many months since I, I bought a car? I don't know, but we, we went and looked at that. We went and looked at... Uh, Buy that to deliver pizza and pay it off in no time. Yeah, Uber. I'll. The thing about delivering pizza. Yeah, live in your mom's basement. Make your twenty two hundred dollar a month payments on that vehicle, Man. and you'll you'll have it paid off in no time. Especially because the price of electricity to charge it up is probably what next to nothing. Electricity is almost free now yeah, yeah. compared to. Man, I worked in a place and a guy bought one of those. Uh, Ah, uh, what's it called? Welcome, Adam. What's it called? Uh, the, where you plug? It's a plug-in hybrid. It was a uh, Toyota. I don't know what do you call it, Toyota? What's a Toyota plug-in? It's a. It's anyway. I don't know. He Brain bought one of those. Something. He parked it next to the shop and had a cord running out to it. And the president of the company found that. The guy flipped out. He was in the shop chewing that guy out, telling him to park that thing out in the parking lot and never plug it into his building again. <laughs> This guy was driving back and forth to work for free. Plugged his, plugged his uh, uh, Toyota uh, into, the, well, into the side of the building. Can you take a plug-in hybrid Wrangler off-road? I could get it off-road. <laughs> okay, yeah, can on, you get it back, back on, on road? <laughs> road? Yeah. Jeez. Hybrids and EVs are very heavy. Yep. Yeah, Tom, I don't know. It seems like it would, the whole EV thing is just, it's strayed so far from any of the sensible, like, there were arguments that could be made for it at one time. You know what I mean? Like small EV cars for short travel, they could be really, but they, they don't build them that way. They build them, they're big monst heavy monstrosities that cost absurd amounts of money. Two hacks. Gas, ass, and grass. We used to say Welcome that. Welcome to Axe. We used, I know him. We used Jeff? to say that. I remember that. And I live real close to where he is, but it was a long time ago. It was 1973. People used to say that all the time. People say that to hitchhikers. See, this... this Gas, this... ass, or grass. Nobody rides for free. Yeah. <laughs> no but, no but. Yeah, but. <laughs> Nobody, that's exactly right. Nobody rides for free. Exactly right. This this yeah, Wrangler two, hybrid has been out for two years already, and and I have never even heard of it. I well, how would you know? They look the same as the other ones. Who knows? Well, it says twenty twenty one. They came was when they were introduced. Yeah, so they could be around. We just don't know it. I two mean, hacks, nobody, uh, two hacks. I was watching your your uh, uh, your video this morning, where you're always rambling. I'm just rambling. The other guy's doing the work. He's like two hacks is like me and you. You're doing the work, and I'm rambling. See, if the EV people would pay some social media influencers to hype their stuff, maybe they would get somewhere. But they expect it to just... Well, 
Look what happened with uh, Rich Rebuilds. He was really hyping the electric cars until he put the LS Chevy in one. I thought that was, that's one of the coolest cars I've seen is a Tesla S model with an LS Chevy in it. And they went to all the trouble. I mean, he's, he's a sharp dude. He got all the wiring working so everything inside the car works right. Everything's like Tesla meant it to be, except it's got a gasoline engine up front that's fast. It's oh, not Jimmy as fast as a Tesla, though, is it? I think they're getting about 600 horsepower out of it. Yeah, I think it's pretty quick. And, of course, they don't have all the... They don't have 2,000 pounds of batteries in it. So... Yeah, but, Tom, where are you going to get enough piss? Piss, yeah. It's like these new trucks where they have to put the cow piss in them. What is it? Uh, I know they don't call it that. DF. What is it? TF fluid. T? D. Oh, D E F. Yeah. D is in dinosaur. E Diesel. as in. Yeah, some kind elephant. of elephant. Some kind of urine. F is in. Yes. Yeah, they. Dinosaur flu. I mean, there's the, there's the, there's the scam of the century. Got people buying cow cow urine to pour in their truck. How did we get to this point? <laughs> How did we get to this point? I don't know. That's just the way it goes. That's the way she goes, as they say. I don't know. How do we keep the car hobby fun? Hearing protection in a dino cell. We're in a dino cell. Can you imagine what noise that animal made? I wonder what it sounded like. Mm -hmm. Might be lower, lower uh, frequency than we can hear. Might just be silent. run on piss yeah uh, Jeff that thing's looking pretty good not sure you're steering there I'm, I'm looking to I'm looking to see uh, how all that's going to work out I know what it is a big long drag link going to be interesting to see how that uh, how, how that goes I don't think that can turn very far uh but it should be pretty light up there. It should be pretty light on the front wheels. Tom, it, it you fill the tank with pee. It uses that to generate electricity and power. And then it, uh, um, distilled water drops out the exhaust pipe. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, this, uh, he's got it almost right. He says cow pussing, but it's pissing on a flat rock. Yep. <clears throat> I went through... Uh, through El Paso one time, and it was raining that, that hard. And I was following a guy that had a trailer behind a, oh man, it was a it was a uh, Dodge D50, the little, who made the D50? Wasn't that a Mitsubishi powered? Mitsubishi, but it had a Toyota, six-cylinder Toyota engine in it. Really? And, and, I yeah, thought that was only a four-cylinder truck. It was, but he did that. Oh, I his, see, I see. He and his father put this engine, he had a Toyota Super engine in it. And of course, they had the, they had the, uh, the, um, the control module, the computer, in the glove compartment. But the base of the windshield. Oh, went. demaniac! You're messing up the valves. It's pissing, pissing. Passing <laughs> off. Aye. So, so, so the. Uh, he doesn't want it uh, taken away. Okay. So, the, so the uh, windshield by the windshield leaked, and the water went in that computer. So, there he is, off the side of the road with. 10,000 cars going by, pouring rain, as hard as it pours rain in Texas, and we're up there trying to... <laughs> Spell check keeps correcting it. <laughs> so, so, so uh, we had to put a new computer in it, wrap it in a pl plastic Ziploc bag and hang it under the dash so we could drive away from there. And he had an extra, he had an extra computer with him, but we got out of there. But we were just like we'd been in the shower for an hour with our clothes on. I had oh, a, a Volkswagen. A Volkswagen. A Volks. A Volks. A Valgan. Okay. And um, the floorboards were messed up, like they were busted, and they were hanging off the center column, and they were they were they were like hanging out at the the sides, and we were driving through puddles, and water was coming up like a a fountain up out of the floorboards. You know, Adam. Adam. Adam, there's one on there you mentioned that just it's the one I hate. Is you put on there like real parking brakes and not electronic. 
my Mazda has a little lever down there. You pull it up and it'll zzz, and you hear the two actuators put the brakes on. But twice, that thing has actuated without me touching that. And luckily, both times I wasn't going very fast. Both times, one time I was going about 20 in a parking lot, and the electronic brake just zzz, comes on and the car skids to a stop. The other time I was on, I was in uh, uh, Berkeley, California, and I was on a street and traffic was moving about 25, 26, 27, something like that, just under 30 miles an hour. That electronic brake came on. Full brakes, skids to a stop. And I didn't, I hadn't touched anything. And I had it back to the dealer numerous times. Of course, it's an intermittent problem. They couldn't find the problem. Had it to several dealers, several different Mazda dealers. They never found the problem. Hasn't happened in quite a while. And uh, I hate that thing. Never, never, never buy a car with one of those. And there are a few cars around now that have, uh, that do have uh, uh, mechanical brakes where you actually pull a cable, you know, pull a thing with a cable on it. Uh, I, I can't imagine why they do that. And what's really bad about those electronic parking brakes, it's not a, a circuit of its own. It goes through a CAN bus. It's coming from computers. All it takes is just some error in the CAN bus, and it applies the rear brakes, full rear brakes. If you're going around a corner in a hurry and those brakes come on all the way, you know what's going to happen. You're... I think that's their, that is their plan. They, they, they really would like to have autonomous control of every part of the car this 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 kind of fits the whole self-driving thing they want the, you know you can't have a self-driving car with a human actuated handbrake it has to be electronic so, so part of the idea of creating the autonomous vehicles is to I say autonomous in my computer did you see that that was crazy oh it did something autonomous it, it did but that's part of the whole thing of creating autonomous stuff is it has to all be able to be operated by the, the CAN bus. And that's why it's there, and they develop it there, and they, they, they charge you for it. They put it well, there, and they charge you for that's, it. That's why they only... And they're not going back. They should. Like, really, we should fight them. We should make them get rid of this stuff. But common sense is not coming back. It's, it's getting worse. Ten years from now, we're going to wish it was how it is now. We're going to say, but see, we're dying breed. We're 30 years from now, the kids won't remember what it used to be like. We'll just be old people talking about the ancient past. There's a couple of things here. Volkswagen means the people's car. Yeah, that's Hitler's revenge. Um, I'm with you, too, Max. Okay, do I don't you, know how do, to do it. Do you remember Farfig Mugen? Yeah, Farfig Mugen. Farfig Mugen. Do you remember that? Farfig Mugen. On the commercials? Yeah. You do. I didn't remember. Yeah, that was like a 90s thing. It was it? a 90s thing. I don't remember where. I mean, I... It was I, somewhere in my that's past. That's when they were... The advertising campaign I mean, was I would never feel good driving a car like that. Yep, my uh, my Jeep has a... Zzz, brake like that. Yeah. My... Uh, the Valiant, of course, it has the handle that you pull. They all have cables. I really, really like that. Keep the car hobby fun. Keep the government out of car hobby. Yeah, how do you do that? Man, how do you do that? Uh, you can't afford new cars. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what. Well, the thing I, that it really I think is... I think there's a conspiracy to ruin the automotive industry in the U.S. I, I don't know. I can't imagine what it is. It seems like it. No, a lot of it is because they want they want these self driving cars and stuff like that. Who's they? They want to take Man. government people and people central planning. They want to be able to control the cars. <laughs> They, they don't want people to be able to make bad choice, choices that are bad for everyone else. The young generation needs to wake up. They don't understand the dangers. Yeah, I think I've told the story. I think they do, but I, I don't think they feel like they have any... Like, it's the older generation who has, like, there's a lot more older people. You, you notice there's less and less younger people in comparison to the older and older people. And the older and older people who haven't stopped it. The older and older people are the people in government who are pushing it, or, well, who are allowing it to go forward. Not a sponsor. Diet Dr. Thunder. Not a sponsor. Just, and so just if cheap. the older generation right. is pushing this on the younger people, they, they know there's nothing they can do to stop it. They just, they're going to, at some point, they'll overthrow, but, but it won't be 
it'll be a couple more years. I mean, look at it right now in the cities. They are causing all kinds of crime and stuff well, like that. They're... It's like I was sitting, I was sitting at um, dinner with my son and Kim was, I think you were there, weren't you? And my son's 42 and his daughter, my granddaughter is 17 and we're sitting there and I'm upset because they just passed the uh, the new infrastructure bill, and in there, part of the infrastructure bill is that the new cars, starting in the 2026 model year, have to have active microphones in the car, so when you're in there, it, it listens to everything that's said in the car and transmits it off to some place where it stores it. I was really upset about that, because I think that's terrible. And my son was sitting there going, that eh, doesn't really matter, and we asked my granddaughter who's 17 she goes oh i don't care I said, you don't care what's wrong and then my son goes you know he goes look here he goes there's four people sitting there every one of us has a device in our hand because we had our phones there and he goes every one of those has an open mic and it's already recording everything he goes so why should we care i'm like you know just principle we're, we're gonna allow our government to require devices in all the cars built from 2026 on to record everything that's said in that car and send it off somewhere and store it really can't believe it strange okay i'm i'm missing something the younger generation they want everything done for them yeah dr thunder yeah dr See, thunder you know what that is I, it's I like it's cheap dr pepper jeff the, i don't i don't think that's entirely too the younger generation, I mean, it's just that's that's a like a stereotype, right? There are a lot of people in the younger generation that want everything done for them, but there are a lot of older people who believe that they are better than everyone else and that they they are entitled to everything as well. Like there's people in every generation who just think that there's they're more special than everybody else, and but there are young people who are hardworking and who are patient and who are, but like. Those things have to pay off. Like there has to be a reward for being, for bucking that trend of just having your hand out all the time. And every time there's people with their hand out all the time, there's always somebody giving them something. There's people on the internet going, oh, I have it so hard, give me stuff, you know. Oh, I'm an immigrant, give me stuff. Oh, I'm a, I'm a minority, well, give me stuff. The immigrants that I know. And they get it. So why should you work hard if the people who just got their hand out are always getting something and it gets worse and worse? Like, it's like, I don't, at some point you can't blame them. Like, why, why work hard when you stand in line with your hand out is a better deal. It's I want to say tough. something about immigrants. Immigrants I know, which are ones that came in legal, that I've helped them come in legal, and other ones because I kind of know that crowd, they are the people that have... They always work, they have two jobs, three jobs, they save their money, and they, a lot of times they go into business, or they buy a home, or they, they do something. The illegal immigrants are a different story. Some of them work too, but uh, the immigrants I know that are hardworking immigrants, this is a country of immigrants, so a lot of, a lot of immigrants work hard. It's no longer just a handout. It's not being taken from one and given to another. Yeah, it's, it's well, it always has been. It's public funds, or just, and it's it's gross misallocation of public funds. Or just type when the, you are type the money into existence, and you know, and typing. I, I don't want to get into a whole political thing here, but I am typing money. It is into, political. Typing money into existence is the worst form of taxation there is because that's Tell what causes that's what causes inflation, and. And uh, that's what's happening. You know, look at what our money was worth just two years ago compared to now. It's really sad. It's not like just a handout. Saying, okay, uh, 1984 by George Orwell. Everybody needs to read the book. Yeah, you know that 1984. I remember that was way out in the future. <laughs> now it's 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, we're way beyond that. The social engineering that's going on in our our country is 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 criminal. It's it it is. criminal there's a lot of people on all areas of the spectrum who are suffering there's a guy the people a on guy. on drugs are, are very sick you know and they're victims 
of Man. society's mess. Guy making twenty eight dollars an hour running a, a five man crew. Well, first of all, I say in today's economy, he's probably underpaid. But it's amazing to see some guy doing that. That's that's a good thing. Um, God, when I was nineteen, what was I? Nineteen. I was in the Air Force. I was like an Airman Two Striper, so I didn't have anybody working for me. But within a year, I had people working for me. As soon as I was a sergeant, I had people working for me. Um, well, it's time Stop coming it. for nobody. Man, two hacks. Every time I see him, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I know right where he lives. So then I think about Rantoul, Illinois. That's where I was when I was 19. Let's see. Uh, time's coming. Nobody talk, learn sign. <laughs> you are right. Oh, I see. You are right. Young people are all different. A lot of immigrants are family oriented, but those countries do empty empty their prisons out. Uh, you, you know, you know, there's a big problem on the southern border, and it's not Mexicans. It's uh, it's that's that's an entry point. Uh, so wait a minute. I want to say about New York, right? There's rumors that they were flying illegal immigrants into housing like encampments in new york city now if if you or i try to get on an airplane how many forms of identification do we have to have there's no such thing as being illegal it cannot happen so whoever is letting those people on a plane is committing a criminal act by bringing them here into the united states and they are the same people who own the airplanes so whoever's doing this is committing criminal acts and they should be in some way they should be punished for bringing people in who are not supposed to be here and our taxes should not be going to house and and it's and there it runs deep what they're trying to do they really are trying to undermine our society as a whole it's it's a mess but then i've brought immigrants in legally well that's a whole right. different thing yeah, and the and the the People I brought in right away they had jobs and a lot of them took menial jobs one she got a job in a in a country club cutting up lettuce and did that until she get a job she got her uh, nurses aides certification went to work in a hospital and then then she became an RN eventually got her bachelor of science in nursing and she's been a productive member of this society for over well, almost 30 years now so that's that's great, you know. And I brought a couple other people in, didn't really like the U.S. and wanted to leave, and they left. And those books... <laughs> that when was kind of funny. When I was in school, those books were required reading, and they were above my head. I didn't understand them because of how I was brought up. And now I think some of those books, they're trying to ban them because they don't want people to, they don't want people to read them. They don't want people to understand what's going on. 1984 what's this uh it is it's criminal misallocation of funds and they have the 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 plan that they have is so messed up that i can't even discern it like it's it's so layered in mired in insanity of or it just doesn't make any sense because there's a part of me like it's really hard you can't get people to work fast food job for under 20 dollars an hour so okay so you bring in immigrants so that you can get good cheap labor hard people who are, want to work hard and and build their life up and stuff like that but why would you bring them in illegally then see there's 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 stuff that's going on here that it doesn't track you can't explain any of these things like why when they bring these people in don't they register and then they would be registered good night dugster thanks for coming in thanks for coming in two hacks i got a thanks question for, being for you here, dugster jeff where are you where's your uh where's your family from I'm just curious where they came in from on political asylum. Uh, see, I yeah, I know people who come in on political asylum. And, and there's lots hard. of need for that in the world today of people who need asylum and people who are trying to get out of mess, dangerous, messed up places. But the way that it's happening is intentionally wrong. Who's it's huge? intentionally wrong. Huge. They're not registering these people properly. Huge. They are intentionally using them to... Um, YouTube services. YouTube services. Uh-oh. I'm just... Uh, We're getting canceled. 
I'm just we're talking uh, about the wrong talking things. Talking about the wrong thing. I'm she, still. I'm just want to know from Jeff who where where his family came from. I'm just really curious because uh, I knew people that came in. Well, in the '60s, it was a big deal with when Castro, uh, you know, the whole communist Cuba thing. And I had friends that came in on little boats from uh, Cuba and did well here. The one I knew first, his father, they paired me up with him because I knew some Spanish. We were in South Dakota. Nobody spoke Spanish there. So he and I ended up being friends. And his father taught uh, Spanish at the, at South Dakota State University. So right away, he was a productive member of society. And they, you know, they're still here. He's my age. He's 70, the, the son. And he's still in the U.S. Uh, Hungary, Romania. But my mom was born in Austria. Austria. Wow. Hungary and Romania. Yeah, Jeff, you were gonna you were gonna call me about some sheet metal, but it looks like maybe you got those. Uh, you decided to go a different route, and I did see your your name there, so that's why I was kind of curious about the the name, and and where they came from. But man, they came from Eastern Europe. Whoa! So they got out of Eastern Europe somehow back when it was uh, it was uh difficult. Uh, it's more than cheap labor. The census counts everyone, so it's also adding. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, seems, and that's and, and that's engineering. It seems that's like it. utter insanity to bring in undocumented illegal immigrants to the point at such a volume of people that you're changing con the size of congressional districts. That's a lot of people, and to think that that's not going to backfire in some kind of really negative way is crazy, and it is. It's an unmanageable thing to have that many people who have no, who are completely reliant on the government in every way. They have no housing, they have no food, they have no job without the government supplying them everything, which of course is what the government ends up doing. Kim, it's looking, insanity. Kim, looking passable, can you tell when you put the work in? Can you tell when you put the work in? Can you tell when you put the work in? She works harder than I do. I don't work. You don't work. When we finish work and I'm still cleaning tools off, and she's like, grease up to here and beat tired. I gotta go take a shower, and then she's in bed out because it's like, because she's completely overdone it. Uh, my wife is Korean now, Korean, they didn't import my Okay, same thing there. When my mom and her family came here, they lived in Montana. Man, they went to the cold. Whew, that's, a, that's a rough place to get started. Uh, I need to call you still, cow work. Yeah, okay, Jeff. You know, I've been watching sheet metal. I didn't really see much of sheet metal work. I saw you using 3003, I think, 040, which seems, I don't know. I don't know what your why your choice is, that material and that thickness. Uh, but I'd be interested. I really want to, yeah, it'd be interesting to talk to you about all that stuff. Uh, let's see here. I knew people from Hungary, got out in the 50s, risked their lives, and uh, two small children. You know, Eastern Europe was a, was a bad thing trying to get out of there. Uh, when do you think the car industry started going off the rails? Well, I mean... I think that what, what really started taking it off the rails was not all the computerization, because sometimes computers can do some good things with um, fuel economy and stuff like that. Can. Um, but I think that it was the... Um, the What is it? Autonomous driving? Self-driving cars. When they started building stuff to drive without human intervention, I think that's when cars started to become absurd. Because they're... Well, yeah, they're not human-friendly because they're not intended to be. They stopped looking at, well, what... what? Well, twice I've been driving those cars when I rented them. And twice I've almost had a serious, serious accident because because of what they try to steer you into. And luckily, you can overpower it with steering wheel. But if you weren't paying attention, you, there's twice I would have had serious accidents if I just let the car do what it was trying to do. So it takes all your attention all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say when they start to go off the rails. It's It's been a long, like, like anything, Long, slow process. Incrementally. More stories from there. What my grandpa told me, yeah. 
communist world was not a good one. It does remind yeah. us all that the, the world can, like, be very sketchy and really, yeah. really rough. Like, it brings, it circles back around to the whole Nivlak thing. Is like, somebody can, like, drive up to your place where you're staying for the night and just drive off with your stuff. And, um... You had government telling car companies what to make. Yeah, there's what I mean, but they have been the doing that for a long time. And it's, so, uh, you know, when well, did that start? And when it first started out, it was kind of like a building code, you know? You had to have a seat belt, and you had to have a classical steering column, and you had to have safety glass, and there were, you know, it was kind of like that. But then it went on from there, and what I say is, and that was late 60s, so then incrementally, it, it's just we accepted it. The people accepted it, and now it's now it's way off the rails, sadly. Uh, absurd now, but if we keep pushing think of what they can be, compared to the first airplanes to modern aircraft, well... Yeah, I'm, uh, that's my whole uh, career. Fly-by-wire airplanes the last 15 years, of, or more than that now, 20 years involved in, with fly-by-wire airplanes since 04, so yeah, it's been, actually it's 03. It's been 21 years I've been working on that stuff. Since the bumper. Yeah, I remember when the whole, the whole, Five mile an hour bumper thing came out, and the, when was that? That was it was before that. I had a '56 Ford, and I'd taken the bumper off because I was painting it, and I got stopped by a sheriff deputy because I didn't have a bumper, and he chewed my ass up one side down the other. I told him I took it off to paint it, and told me to go home. He got a call. If he hadn't got the call, I would have got a ticket. He told me to go home right now and put that bumper on, <laughs> like it makes any difference. Oh man! So yeah, the, a lot of what has to do with the aircraft it, 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 and the safety today, which right now, right now is not the time to be flying. Uh, the uh, is the training. I mean, the CRM, crew resource management, and the training, 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 training checklists. Uh, I mean, you know, no, no, uh, no winging it, no <laughs> winging it. There you go, no. Uh, just flying by the seat of your pants anymore. You just, when I was in, uh, you know, flight testing and research and development, what we did was we were, we were developing checklists and developing procedures and CRM, what we called CRM, crew resource management and uh, checklists were a big deal. And having a crew that goes off a checklist or something or misses a point, it's bad. I think the car industry started to go down when oh, Romney's father took over AMC. Well, I'm trying to think of when he actually ended up being in charge of AMC. Uh, don't really remember. I know the bumper cars run oh, on electricity. Cars. They have that arm that goes to the uh, to the ceiling to catch the electricity, and then the bottom wheels go on the the ground on the floor. What's, what's they run on electric? If you don't know, tube surfaces. We're talking about bumper cars. Oh, bumper car, uh, big bright red rubber baby bugger. Did I? Yeah, those things. I mean, eventually, <laughs> when they have the cars that have anti gravity that can fly around and launch directly into space and stuff like that, and they have they you you won't be able to just control them. People will die. They have to all coordinate with each other, like for flight pathing and stuff like that, like on uh, the Jetsons. Those little Although, those cars all have to. They have to coordinate, or they'll all be smashing into each other. People will be getting killed. So at some point, they do got to figure out the autonomous driving cars. And I don't know. It seems like they're pushing it really hard and really fast. Maybe they know something that they don't. Supposedly, the CIA... They don't is, trust people. Well, maybe they shouldn't. Maybe the CIA has gone to the future. They see that it, it won't Gravity. work unless they do this development gravity isn't they real. can't tell us the truth we're not we can't handle the truth i think is what it what it amounts to Fun to drive in but a we can still hunter. rail about how good it used to be in the good old days so what did you learn people what did you learn to what did you learn to drive in first car i drove was a 1957 ford station wagon 292 which is a wide block three speed on the column and i drove around a parking lot with my father next to me and he was Give me a hard time. Single pot masters. Single pot master cylinders. Oh yeah. KJ Kylie. Hello. Did you just get here or you just been quiet in the background? 
Yeah, I. I you know, I see, early. I see, I see people freak out over a single master cylinder. Half my life, I drove cars as single master cylinders. That's just how it was. They're and they're problematic when they're old. And that's the thing is the new cars that they're building now are going to also be problematic when they're old. 72 Ford Pinto 4-speed. Hey, as long as it was a wagon or as long as it had the upgrade to the fuel tank gun, you know, the, the wagon was not a problem. Man, I like Pinto wagons. Man, I want another Pinto wagon. Find me a good Pinto wagon. Oh, I remember an episode of the X-Files about car bumpers. Yeah. Is there a car or truck? Is collectible now. Thought it never would be collectible. I have a falling like it. You know, I can go back 20 years, uh, maybe 30 years of cars that I thought would never, I didn't think anything was collectible. I think right now, if you can keep one running, the, uh, what was the little 2C Cadillac that was made in Europe and sent over here and then they finished it over here? Cadillac, uh, God, what was that thing called? I can't think of it. It's like what late, year you think it was? Late would 90s, be? maybe. And then the, the Buick Riata, same thing, two seat Buick. I think those are collectible. I think some here, what's kind of strange now is cars that are really. Is it that Deville? No, Fleetwood? No, 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 no. Eldorado? Seville? None of those. I can see them. None of those. Um, look up Cadillac uh, made in Italy, something like that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I remember an episode of the X-Files. Uh, Adam got it. The Diolante the, the was built over there. And then they flew them over to the U.S. in 747s. If you can believe they did that, that drove the price up. And then they finished them here, and they put a shitty engine in it. I think they put a 4100 aluminum terrible engine in it. But I think the car itself could be collectible. Sit in a museum or something, maybe. They, and they're, they're nice to drive when everything's working, but they're electronic nightmare. Uh, and the Buick Riata. Yeah, there's an Elante. Yeah, a lot of these cars are... Right now, what do you think right now would be collectible? You know, I think what's collectible now is like, like look at the Mustang. The Mustang, there's, there's a gazillion of them out there, but then there's some Shelbys, so they're like special Mustangs. I think those would be collectible just because... It's a, it's a special version of the Mustang. And uh, the first car I drove was the FX Atmos. My, my car that Atmos. is collectible, that I never thought would be collectible, that the, or has a cult following at least, which is kind of what collectible is, is um, what are those big Chevy Caprice? Can you believe people what you, really like those things? What year Caprice? I don't know. Well, there's the big square ones. What was the end of them? 77 to whatever it was, the big square Caprices. That, like every police car was a Caprice yeah. for a long time until the Crown Vicks came around. Uh, but the, the Caprices that were really good would have been like 66, 67, 68, like that. Shop injury. Oh, okay. It, there's people here that weren't here at the beginning. we got to talk about the shop injury. Yeah. Oh, those oh, yeah. big, big uh, animal looking things. Okay, so <laughs> I was working on, you know, one of the uh, bench grinder. Um, I had some three inch pipe, nipple half inch pipe. So it's threaded. And I was trying to take the threads off because I was using it to stuff on a piece of three quarter tubing. And um, what were you doing? Was we were taking these things, we were making a T. You know, well, let me go and make a T. So that's why she had these partial. So I'm nipples. grinding it down. And there's a guard on my my wheel, and it, it grabbed it. I don't really know how it grabbed it, but it grabbed it out of my hand a little bit, and it pulled it into the guard, and the guard made it spin inside the guard, and it spit it out, ejected it onto my thumbs. It took the tips went, of both of my it thumbs. It went around the, it went around the guard. Smashed snot out. It really hurt, and blood went everywhere, and I was like, ah! And I, like, I, he was inside, so I came all the way from the garage with like bleeding i was like i broke off the tips of my fingers it hurts a lot and we bandaged me up and it's actually pretty okay it's not anywhere near it's as not bad pretty as but the, it's it's not so bad the blood would have indicated it was a lot worse because it was a lot of blood but it really wasn't all that bad yeah um that's why i mean they're they're plentiful 
they 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 had good power reliability. They were built for commercial use and about? stuff like what are you that. About? I think the three fifties. I think you saw oh, oh, about this. Oh, the Dodge. But the style of car itself is sort of like uh, the Dylan's really? talking about. Yeah, you know that body style right there, that Caprice. There's one that's. It's My mom same, had one of them. It's the same body, but the back window's a little different, the front end's different, and that's the Impala. And I think the Impala is collectible, but that's not today's cars. And the Katerra, the Caddy Katerra, oh man, what a sorry thing that was. That was a, uh, that was actually made by Opel in Germany, and it was, because we didn't have many of them here, it was a nightmare to work on. It was horrible. Horrible to work on. Cadillac Katerra. There's one right there. Which one? What colors? Uh, second from the second from the right on the top. This one? I think so. It doesn't look that old. No, it's ninety-seven to one, but the, it's a it's a uh, mm. it's a German Opel, but they were just. Dean Stevenson is is in the seat here. Ah, Dean, you're here. Uh, so, um. Uh, yeah, anyway, today's cars, what would be collectible today? I think the Shelbys will be. I think the the Corvettes that are not the, not the C8, especially, but special C8s. Like the, what is the, what do they have now? Z06 or something? Those might see, be. See, but those. But those are really but expensive see, look, cars. The specific question was a car or truck that is collectible now that you thought oh. never would be. Oh, that I thought never would be. Okay, I thought, talking about today's. Uh, yeah, I think the, uh, I don't know, I don't know, Kim, good effect, maybe she would come on the show with you both thumbs all bent up like big, big, <laughs> no, you know what, we have these little radios we carry around, and if we're at different places, like up in the house and she's up there, we always have these little radios so we can talk to each other, and she didn't take one with her, so she's up there, she comes running into the house, she goes, help me, help me, I cut myself, I think I cut my ends of my fingers off and she's got white paper towels that are all full of blood and I'm like oh no so that there was there's a little clinic right up the road that's in a in a van and they're two days a week yeah, they're there and they would have sent and me said, straight to the ER I, I was like no I said, no, no I said they're there right now let's just go over there no 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 I want you to do it and I go I'm not a doctor I don't want to even look at this so she's I got some peroxide she starts opening up the paper towels and she's got her thumbs out she goes look at them I go well let's see it well, she goes it's the thumbs well in there they're cut but they're not bleeding anymore and it's like oh that's not so bad <laughs> it's like the worst thing was it was all grimy greasy black nastiness so uh so we cleaned them up and banished them and that was what two days ago they look pretty good right Pontomania, now. you're right uh, we our our showmanship really needs to improve for both of our channels' sakes, we need to have big bandages and, you know, do do the um, do the uh, Mr. Beast thing where our head's real big and our fan, thumbs have big band-aids on them and stuff like that in the thumbnail. That would that would probably be <sighs> FX Atmos. I guess I could look I that up because I've, ne I've never even heard of this. I don't thing. know what they do. You could. I also believe that time travelers are ruining the classic car market by coming back in time, oh. stashing cars in barns in some places, and then trying to recover them in the future. And it just, it's messing everything. What is this? Ziz Quit doing that. Is Z. Quit doing that. Ziz is Z Stop color. it. I don't allow it. Time what? travel is against Wait a minute here. conventions of the somebody. Last year they had a lot of cool wagons. It could be V8 swap. Man, I'm 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 a guy that likes. Where the hell did anybody get one of these? I'm like I'm I'm a guy that likes wagons, and I like the old Opals, but the new Opal, that Opal that they made that Katerra out of was horrible. The old Opals I like, like the Opal GT and the Opal Manta. Man, I like Opal Mantas. You did not have one of these. You did not like own one of these. I I defy you. Send me a picture of yourself with this it's car. Like, that's from like nineteen fifty six. There was something. like one of these. This is like a concept car. Look, there there it even says it. Concept car. I, I see. I see. Con Adams. I have it stashed in a barn. You do. 
Darn time travelers! Coming back here messing up the classic car oh, market. The barn will fall in someday and <sighs> poke two holes in the roof. Yeah. The fins. There's no rule over protection. That car is dangerous. So, uh. Yeah. The. the oh, see, I'm just scrolling away. We're not helping 70, you figure out which cars shares. can be easily bought and stashed for future. Oh, and you know what car I really like? And, and, uh, um. Levi's, uh, his, uh, God, why can't I think of the Laguna? I like the year before. I like the 73 Laguna the best, but I like the Lagunas because they had the plastic nose on the front. And no, I think they made the, the Malibus look really good with the Lagunas. I almost bought a 73 Laguna. It was an El Camino. It had the Laguna front end on it. But another one of those I just you know, almost and nah, I didn't buy it. And later I wish I had. Pretty nice car. Uh, Let's see where we at YouTube here. services. I know about the future. I just don't talk about it because it'll make me look crazy. And I already look pretty crazy. But I know. You don't got to hide. You don't got to pretend like you're all high and mighty. I know. Well, that, that El Camino. And whatnot. That El Camino that it was a... Zero point energy is going to ruin the petroleum market. So we have to give all the rich people time to get out. Partially the Blue Laguna. Yeah, that was a movie, wasn't it? Where is the no, point? a Laguna is a car. Doesn't so blue, Levi have but, a Laguna? No, no, I'm partial to the Blue Laguna, and it's oh, actually the Blue it's a Laguna. Response to... Yeah, remember the Mercur uh, Scorpio and XR4Ti? Yes, I remember those well. It was a Mercury dealer next to my one of my radiator shops, and they sold those through the Mercury dealer. I never really understood what the marketing was there because it was a very European car that. Probably wasn't going to sell in Mercury dealers. Don't know. Yeah. See that nose piece on that one that's on the far right, the, the red and white one? It was a 73 El Camino that had that nose piece on it. It had a 350 automatic. It was it was just an Ike's car. It was kind of a light. I think you have to car. go back more than a dozen years before anybody doesn't think that the Laguna is but, a good classic. I think but, people like them now. I don't think you can get one cheap. Yeah, but Dylan's, Dylan's has a... I think his is a, look up 75 or 76 Laguna, because he's got the the front end that's sloped a little. It's like the, it's a little newer than that one. That's just the one I like. Yeah, I oh, think, yeah, those are hideous. Yeah, I think that's the one he's got. Yeah, those are not popular yet, but there's not a lot around. But his. It's not like the, the junkyards are lousy with these Lagunas like they were with the Caprice Classics. They were everywhere. There were so many of them Chevys. Okay, I like the Terra steering box. I took my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Circuiting ball, and that wasn't great for unibody outrigger rust. Nor was the underbuilt Opa chassis. Holden. Oh, Holden. Did Holden have a, a version of that car? See, I didn't know Holden. See, I don't always keep up with the, with the stuff from Down Under. I would assume that that's a car that could have ended up in Australia. Huh. D Stevenson, the S3. See, um... Dylan, this um, this, um, um, he uses two different names. Drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, Dylan, who are we talking about? Levi. Levi's his last name. Dylan's his first. <laughs> okay, so don't he, dox him. So yes, yeah, Why but it's me. Just give him his no, own phone no, number too. It's, it's me. I can't. But he, he uses his name. Uh, I, I, Dominion, the end, thing I, with time travelers is is, is, is is most people only move forward at a constant rate. People who can move forward more rapidly or backwards are 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 doing they're breaking laws. So Dylan's car, I don't know if he's still on here. I'm hoping he's still there. The uh the Laguna, that front end. Hello, engine is... light garage. Welcome. You're very late, but uh we're glad you're here. I think that front end's my hit. My thumb grew back. I have powers of regeneration. Uh, just don't touch it because that will hurt. Because it's kind of still hurt a little bit. If he's still here, I thought about pulling a mold off one of those and making a light front end for that car because that, that thing looks heavy. But I don't know if it is or not. I don't know if that big rubber bumper on the gun is heavy or not. Some of these people have not been in our stream yeah. before. so I know. 
like and subscribe. Oh, engine we could light really garage. Use. Yeah, we started off with Kim's thumbs getting boogered up in a um, in a grinder accident, but they're 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 healing up real good. That happened two days ago, and they're looking pretty good. And they weren't as bad. The blood was bad, but the cut wasn't that bad. But it hurt a lot. Uh, Look, I was watching a YouTube video telling all of the truth, and it made perfect sense, is the whole thing with aliens is just lies to cover up the time travelers. That's all it is. It's all time travelers. <laughs> There's no such thing as aliens. It's complete and it's utter BS. BS. Okay. It's a secret, Bob. Tell him everything. Holden Auto did a great job edging out their main competitor early on, so much so that most people have never heard of the drop in. Drop in? Drop in. I have no idea. I have no drop idea. Drop them like it's hot. YouTube Services has a lot of interesting things to say that I'm right over my head that's a fly fishing thing i have no idea so so i guess holden had the uh oh it was a commodore that's right it was a, he said it was a bt commodore it was based on i like the old commodores the really boxy looking ones from the i think they were the 70s i really like those really uh squared off looking kind of looks almost like an american impala but they look lighter and actually there's a better looking car than the american uh, impala yeah what's that that's the that's the holden uh, the newer holden commodore and see the holden commodore up there oh, you took it away already there was a el camino like it was a ute version that green one ute version of it that we were supposed to get here as a pontiac but it didn't go. It was tax issues and everything. Uh, they're all just made of stars. I think they just mixed us all up into... Got, got, um, got us all in a big mess. In, in song lyrics, because if Fox yeah, can fix it with saying something about know when to hold him and when to fold him. So. We were supposed to get those as Pontiacs. But yeah. it didn't happen. Tax issues. Um. Yeah, look up the chicken tax. Uh, I remember the singing group, the Commodores. They two were Opal Commodores. Then there were Chevrolet, oh yeah, Opalas, which were Opal Commodores. Oh, okay. The Opala, wasn't that in South America? I think that was in South America. What was the other? What was the other Holden that was so popular? Late seventies, maybe early eighties, two door car. Uh, Monaro. The Monaro. The early Monaros, man, I like those things. Look at that, a wagon. Oh, aren't those South American or are those? Yeah, those are those are left hand drive, so those are probably South American and not Australian. Stupid chicken tax. That's why we still can't have cool, cheap, small trucks. That's right. People don't understand anything about the chicken tax. That was it was uh, it ruined the small truck market. There's probably a dance that goes with it that I don't know. Look up Holden Monaro. Like 19... I don't know. Manaro? Manaro. Like 1978. Something like that. I don't know. I'm guessing on the year. That's newer. Oh, that one might be it. How many doors does that thing have? It looks... That yeah. looks like a... Um, yeah, I think they're Chevy. Yeah, well, Holden is uh, is General Motors of uh, Australia. Oh, I see. Stupid leave it down. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, thanks for getting us ready to make... Don't go. 
Oh yeah, guys, great pickup. Yeah, the the old Monaros, I really like those. See, back in the late seventies, no, you know when it was, it was the eighties. In the eighties, I I I had a radiator business going where I was building radiators, custom made radiators for a lot of cars with engine swaps. You know, like um, big block Corvettes and uh, V8s into S10 pickups and V8s into Ford Ranger trucks and big block Camaros, all this kind of stuff. Built radiators for all this stuff. So in the in the summertime here, I was really busy. The wintertime, I had almost no work. So I decided to go to the Australian market because it's summertime down there. So I started getting Australian Street Machine magazine. Got to know some of the people down there on the phone and writing to them and so forth. And I was going to start advertising down there. But the thing is, the shipping, one at a time, he sent in radiators to Australia was going to make them really expensive. So I had to ship them down there on a ship. So what actually would have happened was I would have been even busier in the summertime up here trying to get the radiators down there for their summer and ended up not doing it. But what I did learn was about a lot of their hot rodding on uh, on the street machine, the Australian street machine magazine. Let's see, what is this pineapple ice cream? What is this Dean Stevenson saying it means boobs in Aboriginal language? What does? <laughs> we already <laughs> talked about nipples in the stream earlier. Monaro. Head for the hills. More doors than Jim Morrison when he was in Australia. I think we're getting into the weird hours. Yeah, I don't know. We're over two hours. I think that's why it's But the Monaro. Out. There's also like a small block Chevy down there. Down under. But then there was another small V8 that GM had that we didn't get up here. And I don't remember what that was. But it was, uh, it was a smaller V8 than the, than the ones, than the small block Chevy was. And we got a Monaro. Holden 308. That's it. 308. And it was a kind of a different looking V8. And we just didn't get them here. There's a couple, couple engines they got down there. Yeah, it could have been 306. I don't know. I was thinking 308. I don't know. There was, a, um, you know, of course, the Hemi 6 we didn't get here. It was developed in Detroit, but never sold there. It was only sold in Australia and maybe New Zealand, down under. And then the uh, oh, LA Woman. Oh, man, I love that song. LA Woman. Uh, my partner also has a beautiful white job. Okay, right. What do you got? Pictures on the wall? 308. Yeah, that's a different 308. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking it's a 308. Hollywood Bungalow, yeah. Oh, that's a great song. I've had that in my car playing it. Just all four speakers blasting. But I don't play that in front of anybody else because younger people probably don't even remember it. You probably wouldn't remember it. Vietnam era. Vietnam era music from uh, Jim Morrison. Look at the Holden guys. Never saw so alone. So alone. So you know I'm going to crank that up later. And you're going to sing along with it. Because I give you permission to no, play because you know because you know doors. the song. Yeah, I have I have all the stuff that's you I always play think the, I don't know your music. I like play, I'm no, it's because I'm, in a, a, I'm embarrassed because it's old music that nobody today they would like would put up with the old man's music, you know. But I there's stuff I kind of like from seventies and eighties, especially the eighties. Man, there's some good stuff in the eighties, but still that's old now. Riffling, mm. ruffling, oh, riffling. Rifling? No, I think riffling. That might be like looking through. That might be a down under English. You know, term. we're over two hours. We're over two Are hours. Are you having a good time? We don't have to stop. All we're talking about, it's gone kind of crazy. It did go off the rails a little bit. Did we talk about all the things we wanted? Rifling. Rifling would be like... Cuts like this in a barrel. Oh, yeah, rifling through your stuff. Yeah, that makes more sense. That does make sense. Um, 
Subaru Outback shed. That Subaru Outback is going to end up being a shed because the darn thing is... We, she just got to finish it. We got some other projects to do. We have so many other projects. I don't have time to keep fixing a car that won't stay fixed. You're out of here, Adam. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have you here. Thanks for coming, Adam. Thanks for refreshing my memory because he's on the... Maybe remember something that I forgot now. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> in Alante, he remembered Alante. Subaru chicken coop. That's right. It's going to be a... Or a cat house or a mouse a house. house. Probably a mouse house before I get to ever get back to the stupid thing. It's got a good five-speed all-wheel drive transmission in it. Maybe I can sell that or something. Adam Dawson. It's got good tires on it. That's a good name. You can't just let it sit forever. Like, at some point, it just starts to depreciate so rapidly. It's already an older vehicle. It's hard to get your money out of it. Cats will get the mice. Yeah, but my cat's gone. Maybe a mouse got her. My cat disappeared. Two days now, no cat. Don't know. Yeah, well, she could have had kittens. Gone it's worrisome, though. She didn't look that big, did she? I don't know. I don't pay much okay, attention Okay, so YouTube is... Leaving. All right. Do you need help? I, I can go <laughs> on a message. We can figure it out. I guess I can't really help with a temporal paradox. See, they know. They know the truth, too. The truth YouTube, is out there. YouTube service. Is that a friend of yours? No, I have no idea who oh. that is. Oh. They came from the future. They, they oh, know I that see. I'm spreading the truth. So they came back the future to see what I was saying. So that they could um, uh, stop whatever. Yeah, maybe she's having kittens. And she went and hid somewhere. I mean, that's a good possibility. But cats that have kittens usually come back and want food. Like, not, you know, they don't disappear like for two days with no, uh, no food. So, I don't know. I'm a Fermi P. Believe. Dean, I, I mean, I really did try. That The first time it seized the cam and spit out uh, the cam gear, we put it in the shop. We live streamed for like three days in a row. I worked harder than I've worked in years on trying to get that car. I pulled the motor, fixed it, put it back in. Drove it around for a week, and then it, it croaked again. And I'm sure the fault is mine, but like I just... I can't spend all summer working on that car. I have other I things I have to do. I gotta say goodnight here, Potomaniac. Hey, it's good seeing you here, and I really liked your uh, your video with the strange car with the fins on the back. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I gotta do that. Weld some fins on a newer car. Oh man. End play. Potomaniac, I have listened to the doors, um, back to back, end to end. Many times. I, I, I do know a lot of Doors songs. I karaoke a couple of Doors songs. I know them. I don't even have to look at the words and stuff like that. But there, it, it is older music and a lot of younger people don't have any appreciation for it. So it's just something like I can enjoy on a personal level. You think they hide for three days? Well, if they hide for three days, maybe she'll show up in the next day or two. Because she sure disappeared. And she was fat, but she's been fat for a long time, but she could be pregnant. I hope she comes back, because he'll be heartbroken if she well, doesn't come back soon. I just feel like, man, what yeah. happened? She, he, he loves our kitty. Well, I took care of her, because she just showed up. She was a lost, a lost cat that just showed up here. So, yeah, I feel bad for her. Don't, nobody, somebody dumped her. That's a terrible thing to do to an animal. What's that that just popped up? Oh, that's something for you. Nope. Oh, that's my transmission. What's your transmission? Remember we went down to Nashville to look at that transmission? And he hadn't had it out of the car? Oh, that that's what it that is. It popped up real quick. One oh, of my good. messages that oh, uh, he has a transmission removed from the car. Okay, so we got to go down there. And we got to go down there and get my trunk lid. Because he's got a trunk lid for me. Yeah, we can take that off or something. He owes me, he owes me a trunk lid and he's got, he owes you a transmission. Yeah, yeah. And I already partially paid for the trunk lid, so... Uh, Dean Stevenson, where's Dean Stevenson live? What part of the country? He's in, uh, Dean is in, um, he's in one of the eastern islands. That's <laughs> the Australians oh, would geez, say. Oh, jeez, I he's can't in, send you Subaru he's, parts. He's in, uh, in, uh, New Zealand. It'll cost more than it And I don't know where in New Zealand. Them. I don't know if he's in the North Island or South Island. See, 
In New Zealand, there's North Island, South Island, and the guys from Australia, they go, well, I'm, we're in the West Island, which isn't even an island, it's a continent. Dean, quit jinxing my Subaru! <laughs> Unfinished projects here. Uh, wow. You guys are great. Thank you so much oh, for there's being more. here. There's more. There is more. Some Plymouth Valiant, either way. It's, I can't read it that quickly. Yep. It's a note came up about that Valiant that we bought pieces off of. It's okay. pretty funny. I bought the trunk lid off of it. It's still on there, and she's getting a transmission. He hadn't pulled the transmission yet. But the car's got missing parts all over it. It looks like a something from a junkyard. And he's got it pulled out of the out of his garage. So he gets all finished, showing it to us. I said, here, let me help you push it in. He goes, it runs. He starts it up and pulls it across. It's like... No fenders, no hoods. Well, there parts I wanted. It was just all these pieces. Looked like a junk car torn apart and he drove it into the garage. Yeah, um, I got some parts coming. That'll be good. That'll be good. I need that for some stuff for my dart. Well, then after a month, she will bring kittens to show them off. They don't power glide because of those kittens. Cats, kittens, and views and so. Glad you like the doors, Kim. Uh... And I like and I like the cars with the fins. Although I don't know if I like those fins that much, but I did like it seeing it on the newer cars. Pretty silly looking, but I liked it. Parts. I, I don't know what that means. If I, if I, yeah, I saw the FI show up somewhere else. It's weird. What does that? Unfinished has the FI in the middle of it. can't keep up with this stuff. Dean, you got me. Always thinking. I hope she does come back in a couple days, and then we'll have to check her out, see if she did have kittens. That would explain why she's so hungry lately. She's been eating twice a day and crying well, for more. She's a big, fat cat. And I've started cutting her food back because she got so fat, but that was like three months ago. Well, you know, and she didn't have kittens then. I thought she was just fat. Then I decided she was just fat because, what was that? That's three or four months ago. I, I cut back the food a bit. Yeah. Oh, finish flag. Oh, I see. <clears throat> but it comes off here as FI. I get it. Finish flag. I've been to Finland. One of the few European countries I've been in, Finland. I don't like the wheels on modern cars. They have the same boring lines. You know, an unfinished project, there's a lot of that that is because of, for legal reasons, like if you do anything different, now you're responsible if anything goes wrong. But also, yeah, it just all becomes one one sort of like universal bleh. Oh, it definitely got warmer here. Kittens are born as the weather gets warmer. Although she has a nice little, there's this box house thing that I put pads in there and heat in there and covered it with uh, moving blankets so it's insulated some and she spent the winter in there at night she'd go in there and sleep in where the heat was so uh oh yeah not, easter... an, in, not an indoor cat that's a it's a easter kittens easter kittens i'm so down with universal blah yeah it's like the cars of the around 2000 my friend Carl. He yeah, said so they all look like jelly beans. They're all jelly beans. No and then, ladies, then like yeah. then like five or six years ago, they all got angry looking in the front end. And now I don't know what they're going to. I don't know. They're all gonna look like Teslas, so they have no grill. I don't know. Yeah, you gotta look at if, if people are car people, you probably watch Tavares and Rich rebuilds, but that that. Uh, S model Tesla Tavares has right now. There are three builds built with a LS Chevy in it. That's quite a car. And those are not, that car is not uh, boring. Not Universal Blah. Oh, without all those batteries in that thing, it's probably a lot lighter. I don't even want um, a uh, V8 power plant in the cars that I'm I just want a good you know, reliable six cylinder. Is I, that I'm kind of, the, kind of the same way. I look at the cars that I'd really like to have. 
I'd love to have a 60 Falcon, first year for the Falcon, with, a, with an inline six. That'd be a great car to have. The Valiant with the slant six. And See, I don't like, the, the I problem know. I have with the slant six is that it's a big block of cast iron. It's very heavy. It's, it's heavier than those little cars probably ever needed. Which makes them super reliable and resistant to like overheating damage and stuff like that. But like, I like the sixes, but I gotta have a V8 with it. What both? Yeah, that's why there's slant six. So there's room next to it for the V8. Yeah, yeah. That's why it leans over to the side. That's why it leans over to the side. But the V8. thing about the V8s, right, is then now you can get performance parts, which, and su not just performance parts, support by the aftermarket. Which is, is a valuable thing to get, you know what I mean? If you go to something six-cylinder, you're almost obscure to try and get aftermarket parts. You're stuck with just whatever you got from the factory. So it's a very, it's a double-edged sword, you know? Like, we just, we don't need 300 or 400 horsepower. We just want something that'll get around. We, we really can't afford to be out hot-rodding in terms of, like, doing but burnouts then, and stuff like that. But then I have, the, I like older stuff, too. I've got that, that, uh... Poly V8, that Poly 318. We need to build and that. I, yeah. I, I, I'd love to find a... a what like kind a of C transmission C do you want to put behind that? A 904. Just put a uh, put it in a, in a C body. We can't. We don't have a 904. No, but we can get a 904. They're kind of expensive now. What really We're is sad, what really is sad is rest. I had a free 65 Plymouth Wagon C body. And I... I couldn't get it at the time. It was in Arizona. I couldn't transport it. So it ended up going to somebody else. But it had a 318 poly in it that full of water and frozen up. But it had a it had a 904 and the car was pretty decent. I mean just detail and it would have been fine. I keep watching marketplace. But it's gone. I saw a 904. You know the guy in California I called. It's in the hospital, Harry. Yeah. Harry had it and he, he had to get rid of it. Yeah. And he gave it away. And I'm like, oh, now it's too late. I can't go get it. Because that's all the way the other side. Why of the country, couldn't I transport it? Not cost effectively. I was working in Maryland at a defense contractor. I live in Tennessee. My friend in Tucson, Arizona died. And there were a, he got killed in a car accident. And there were a bunch of uh, uh, cars he had in his backyard. And that Plymouth was one that was left to me if I... Could have picked it up. Well, I'm in Maryland. It's a big ass car. It means I gotta go to Arizona, find some way to move it to to uh, Tennessee. I was in some big project that I really couldn't cut loose from. I already went out there once, right after he got killed, and came back. But then they started settling the estate and everything, so I uh, I, I just missed it. He had that. He had a 65 Falcon sitting there. I probably could have had that. He had a 69 uh, uh, Sports Satellite that had a 440 in it that he put in it. He pulled the 440 out. He had a third gen Hemi sitting there going to go in it, but he got killed before he got the job done. So that that got... Uh, he told me <clears throat> there was a girl he knew in California that had one and he wanted her to have that. So I don't know if she got it or what, but I passed the information on to Carl's father that that's who wanted it <clears throat> so so uh, I don't know there were some other cars too I'm trying to think of what else he had oh he had a big 500 horsepower Mercedes that he drove around every day yeah I don't know I I rode in that car and Carl scared the shit out of me that thing had a 440 in it, it you know it's a sports satellite so it came with a 318 or a 360, he put the 440 and a, uh, and a uh, 727 in it. But it had these little tiny drum brakes. And we're going like, like a fast car will go on a city street. And we're coming up on a red light. And he's still got his foot in it. And he jams on the brakes. And the car's like this way, this way, this way. And we stop before we hit the car in front of us. And I'm like, hang on, you know. And it's like, yep, 440's fast. But then it wasn't long after that the 440 came out and he had that he had that uh, 5.7 uh, third gen Hemi sitting there and that was going to go in it. So he never got the job done. He was riding in a Dodge van, somebody else driving, and they got it's nighttime, got tangled up in a big wreck with a bunch of cars and a semi truck, and he got killed in an accident. So 
I prefer anybody's. I can have a little passenger down from the driver's seat. Yeah, that's what I always wanted. I always wanted power windows, but just on the passenger side. <laughs> So I mean, we, have, we have two A bodies in the family, and a 440 will just twist one of those in half. Uh, oh, unless you want to weld in frame connectors and, and you know. But then you have an A body. You say you want a 6, but you got a 360 for it. Everybody expects you to put a great big motor in, or else it's nobody's interested in it. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm. There, there's a lot of things that I second guess. It's like, am I doing this because it's what I want, or am I doing it because I want it to be interesting content for the internet? And I'm, I don't know anymore. Well, the know. the uh, see, the, there were three eighty threes in those. The sports satellite was kind of a is kind of a weird car. It had it looked like a GTX. It had the same taillights as a GTX. It was like a GTX car that didn't say GTX on it. it had a small block in it. Hi, yeah. Wendy. Boy, it's awfully Wendy, late. hey, yeah, Glad we're talking about A-Body Chryslers. Talking about A-Body Chryslers. So, um, so anyway, uh, and now I'm distracted with that, A-Body Chrysler. So anyway, uh, oh, yeah, so he put the 440 in it because he, everything he had, he had to put a 440 in it. And then uh, then he got the late model uh, Hemi or third gen Hemi. I guess it wasn't that late model by then. I mean, you can't. But then his life got, yeah. You cut can't short. pull a trailer with an A body, or well, most people don't pull a trailer with an A body. And, and, and Carl always had big Dodge one-ton dually trucks, you know. So he always had one of those around, and his they all had four forties until his last one. And his last one had was a uh, uh, Cummins, and uh, so that was a that was a trailer pulling truck. Carl had good vehicles, and he, but he was definitely a, a Mopar guy, except he usually had a Mercedes around as well. He tried to take the Mercedes to Mopar shows, and they wouldn't let him display it. And he goes, well, right here it says, made by Daimler Chrysler on the tag. They still don't want it to show, because it says Chrysler right on it. Nope. Tall order and a full-size truck. Man, Carl had a... He had a truck I really liked. It was a one-ton I got long arms. I can line the windows down. It was a, it was a uh, God, what was that thing? It was a 79 Dodge one-ton dually that he had a 440 and a, and a uh, 727 in it. And I drove that thing around some. And that was a, you could tow anything with it. What a great truck that was. And when he got rid of that, that's when he got the, uh, the, the um, the newer one with the with the diesel in it. And I was like, what'd you get rid of that for? And he goes, ah, I was getting old and needed a lot of work. I, I really liked that 79 Dodge with the 440. It's quite a car or quite a truck. What are you looking for? Oh, looking I'm for just changing truck. the background because it's... Yeah, that looks like it. So uh, that looks like the front end anyway. Maybe I'll put the 360 in the I, I um, I, in the shop truck. And then he had ones with the round headlights before that. Same body, but a little different because they had the round headlights. What was the last year for the round headlights? 76, 77? Uh, probably 70. I don't know what Dodge. The, the rectangular headlights, the single ones came out in 78. The dual ones like that came out in 75, mm -hmm. maybe 76, I don't remember. 76, but I think. Maybe I'll put the 360 in the shop truck. The green revival truck. It runs good, but a 360 what? would run bitter. Why? Oh, it's got a 318 in it now? Yeah. yeah seven, oh, 79 had both um, both kind of headlights. We'll put a three, three quarter ton rear axle so yeah. we can... What I really like about the 79 was the dash and just the... When you sit well, in the it, dinosaurs are here. We can go to the dining room at any time. Just the... Just the, just the looks of the... How it looked when you sat in it, the instrument panel, the hood with those two sideways scoops and everything. I, I really like the 79 Dodge uh, pickups. And, what, and with his the bird was, bath hood? His was, uh, what do you call it? The bird bath? Bird bath hood. <laughs> yeah, that's what I never heard that before. But yeah, that's what it was. It was a bird bath hood. Uh, you're going to look that up. There actually was one called a bird bath hood. Is that what they called that? Yeah. Yeah, they always laugh about it. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, and it was kind of wiggly when you drive it, you know, because it was uh, so much flat area. There it is, right there, the bird bath. Yeah. Yeah, because well, if you don't market a, it right, it fills it with water. <laughs> that's the last year for that body style. I think the grill's ugly, but the 79, I think, looked really good. What bird bath hood should have never gone away. Yeah, I like the uh, his 79. That's one reason I like driving it, because I'd be looking at that hood, and it was kind of wiggling with the... Vibration. <laughs> I don't know. It was a nice truck. I would really like that. Hood. Really like that truck. And the dash was nice looking. You know the the. And you open the glove compartment this way, it flops down. I remember and that. The yeah. Fuses are in there where you can reach over and grab. That's the craziness. Fuses. Why you would don't have to do crawl on the dash upside no, down again? We got to put them in a secret compartment so the, you have to stand on your head underneath the car to get. The, the only thing wrong with the fuses there is they should be circuit breakers. So you don't have to replace them. You just turn them back on. They could save money by doing it the other way. Like an airplane, they have circuit breakers. Dino fart window. What 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 what? Soar. What what what? Oh, you took the you took the dinosaurs away again. Well, we were looking at bird bath hoods. Okay. Where's, I never heard it called a bird bath hood, and apparently that's what the Mopar guys call it. I was, I, w I was on a kick for a couple weeks looking at four-wheel drive vehicles. Like, I really wanted one, and I, I was like, I was just kept looking and looking and looking, and I, I narrowed it down to a couple, and one of them was a truck a lot like that one. Yeah, the fuse box is cool, but prone to water. The lid is gone and the cab leaks. Yeah, you know, you know, an airplane, I got really used to having fuses. Or uh, the, the early planes I first learned to fly did have fuses. And the important stuff had a thing called a slow blow fuse. But it wasn't long after I learned to fly that um, they all had breakers. It just makes sense, you know, a little push in, snap out breakers. And man, I, I that's. When I redo the wiring on the Valiant, I swear I'm going to put breakers in it. I've got some breakers here, little aircraft breakers. I should just do it. Fusible links are slow glow fuses, are they? Yeah, and you know, ours, we have the... Kim took that... That... Uh, oh! Um, the... Uh, she took that ammeter out of the, the Valiant put a... Bolt a voltmeter in there that looks like it belongs, so you don't have all that running through there. That's crazy. Uh, Stegosaurus fart pain of T Rex. Oh, yeah, you took it away. I go look up there and it's gone. We got bird bath hits. Uh, so, Tavo, what's going on? Uh, I saw, you know, I came in your live so late that it was finished. So I started to watch it and I fell asleep. So now I scrolled it back so I can try to watch it again. It's like an hour and a half, and I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, tight ass volume operations. Um, so I, uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't see the whole thing yet. I sure liked, I sure liked Tavo's, uh, uh, history stuff. His A body, his valiant history, and I, those are good videos. And I hope you do more of them. Of uh, whatever, either uh, uh, Chrysler stuff or oh, you did another one, Chrysler, the early ones, the early, uh, the early Utes. Yeah, I watched that one too. What kind of videos would you guys like to see from this guy? Yeah, what do you want me to do? He hasn't put out a video in a while. All I'm doing is lives. Yeah, well, I don't yeah, know. I, which is okay, but like, if you I'm want, I'm tired of me. Like, this is how you use a screwdriver. Uh, and this is a, if it slips, it stabs through your finger. And uh, let's not show that video. You know, it's like, what do I do? I I've showed like how to uh, like we assembled the we assembled the uh, slant. And, and some of the videos got really tear. The the videos you worked hardest. Iron Dude Dart, yeah, that car. The videos long you gone. worked hardest on got such terrible, dismal views. Some of the really good ones, I thought oh, they were really good, and they just didn't come out. Sixty one two Valiant should be going up tonight. Pause time. Okay. Nice. Good. I'll be watching that. Uh, the, he will, uh, too. Even if it comes up in the middle of the night. And you didn't have a 60. You started in 61. See, we had the 60 here that was a Valiant. And in 61, it was a Plymouth Valiant. Yeah, Road Toads. That's right. See, you didn't know what that was. I told him that that was while he was at a car show. 
But you know who started that Tony. road totes? That was Tony Tony DeFeo. I didn't know that. I had heard that actually. Um, I was part of the Slant Six Racing News. And they called it that. And it was they they I had heard that that those were road totes back then. So that was years you know before he, Tony ever had a YouTube channel or whatever. Those he, people knew that he road wrote an was article something. back in those Mopar magazines that were before what you were doing. Yeah. And that he did one called the road. Well, toad. he was well known back then. The road Just toad. in a different in different circles. We actually started with the sixty one in January of sixty two. Oh yeah, that's right. You said you had a short run there. Hmm. Yeah. See. Uh, yeah, Wendy. Yeah, you have two of them. You have the ones with the round tail lights, the sixty twos. Man, my favorite was a sixty. It's just because really, it's because I got to ride in one when it was brand new. The woman next door to us. I was a little kid. I was kindergarten, and. She bought a 60 uh, Valiant, and she took me for a ride in it. It had a manual transmission, and uh, Road Toads was long before to fail. You think so? Because he wrote that article, like, in the early 80s, I think. But it could be. It could be before him. I don't know. He takes credit for calling in the he takes He takes credit for it, but I don't know if he maybe... I mean, that article, you can search it, and it's still on. You can find that article online. I went, found it, read it. But, yeah, I don't know. It could have been called that long before him. I mean, it certainly fits. Um, there are people that dislike that body style, and they would call it a toad. But I, I really like that body style, but I'll accept it being called a toad. Um, I really like that body style. Is there still a turbo situation? Oh, with us. Yes. We have... Uh, uh, <laughs> water in the I know, I put it in there. That's how I'm I like, get... you got to do something. He's like... I prefer, mm -hmm. I prepare, I prepare the cat, cat food twice okay. a day like that. I put some water and I mash a little food in the water, make a little soup on it, and then let the clumps in the middle. Then I microwave it for 24 seconds, unless it comes out of the refrigerator. Then it gets 27 seconds, and then it goes outside, and the cat sometimes licks up the water first, sometimes eats the food first, but that way I know she's getting enough water, because she won't go over to the water dish and drink, but if I do that, she laps that water, all that wet, soupy cat food up, and and she likes it warmed up, you know, it was winter time, and, you know, cat food, well, I can't imagine eating it anyway, but after it comes out of the refrigerator, it's really disgusting, but... Yeah, of course I'm going to warm it up. Of so, course I'm going to warm it up. The situation with the turbo is, is the car is not drivable until the front end is rebuilt. It's got, it was like really handled terrible. Now one side handles good. The other side still handles terrible. We don't terrible. really, no, one side does not handle good because I never even put the tie rod end together properly, so. <laughs> the cat should return for a second. Right, Johnny, it gets it gets pampered here. It is a stray cat, except it is completely spoiled. But so, we cannot turbocharge a car that you can't even drive. Or we could, but that's just not how... I, I'm not okay with that. I think that the car should be drivable, and then we can put a turbo in it. If we're not going to make it drivable, why waste... First things first, make the car safe. We did the brakes. The car runs good. We got some exhaust. We need a set of tires. I don't want, yeah, I gotta buy tires. I don't like the exhaust. That's got a new there. battery in the car, the charging system worked, the light. We worked on the lights for a month. Get a dyno, the then the front end works. doesn't matter. You just take the wheels off. Oh. And so. Let's just get dry food. We are out approaching of the that, but right? But then we started having some money issues. And we got, we have overwhelming, there's so much to do here. And like, Playing with cars is a lot of fun, but there's got to be first things first, and we have to, we have to have some a sustainable living situation, you know. And so I had to get rid of. I did. We we sold the green car, which was fantastic economically. It was a very good thing to move a good, reliable car that was sellable out of here. But it took a bunch of work to do that. And the Subaru, I thought we were going to sell the Subaru. It just didn't happen. It completely went south, and it's gone. That's well, it's gone. Okay, the turbo situation with the Valiant. Part of this, Tony, Maybe Uncle this UTG, gave me all the pieces and parts. And the agreement was that we do the turbo with him. 
Well, his situation's changed. He doesn't have the big shop anymore, so you can't just go park your car there. He's got a smaller shop. And so I've got to coordinate with him when it's a good time for him. And and we have to get the front end finished. And then there's there's uh, No Name Nationals coming up, and we plan on taking that. I'd like to drive that to No Name Nationals. And with the front end straightened out and tires on it, it should drive just fine. Or we that, could even trailer well, it, but I, you know, I kind of don't want to rip it apart and make it undrivable trying to put a turbo on and then be stuck without a car for No Name Nationals. So the... So the um, if I can drive it there, it doesn't matter if it's turbo or not. I don't even care if I race it. I might race it. I might let Kim drive it up there. It's, who knows what we'll do? I, I might race it. It's not going to go fast. It's just going to drive down the track. It'll be the first time I've ever been on a drag strip. Maybe I should do it. Just that I have the experience of being on the drag strip. And uh, race some other slow car. And then the, uh, the other thing with it is... I want to do the body work on it. Because the body's pretty good. But it's got some rough spots on it. And there's some things I want to do. Uh, to make it a a nicer car, so um, yeah, it would it would definitely so, video so I, better. It would it would present better if it had like some paint well, and I, the badges cleaned up and and made it I'll, look I'll a little bit nice. Yeah, the, the the car really doesn't have much Clean rust on it. It's got a few things, but the floor right where the, under the brake pedal has a big nasty hole right there. But the rest of it has yellow paint. Still, it's not rusty looking. It There's looks... one little spot behind one so of the back wheel, I... behind the back wheels that that's so... about like yo big, but really so brings cut... down the whole thing. I cut out a piece of metal for the floor. Mm -hmm. Kim said she'd trace it and cut it out if I wanted. And I said, okay, have at it. Well, we haven't done that yet. Then I'll take that piece and I'll put it in there, bad Chad style, you know, t -t 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 -t, you know, tack 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 until it's in there. Then finish it, grind it off, paint the inside of that floor so it's uh, so it doesn't rust again. And I'll put some uh, some uh, primer sealer on it, not just primer, primer sealer, so water doesn't get past it. And then I've got the color paint. I could make it this. You same watch color these big content creators, but I and do they that. they start to finish, you know, an hour long video, and they they it's a month worth of them working on it every night, and like we just we don't hit it right. that hard, and and it's just the two of us, and we're you know. Projects like this go slow, especially when you're on a budget and you can't just throw money well, at it and you're starting with nothing. Winter time came and we were going up there a lot of times at night, but then we put the wood stove in there and we start a fire and we're still kind of cold in there. And you know, we'll work for a couple hours and it's like, we got enough going back home. So, and we got to beat back the lawn like every once every couple of weeks, we, we get a nice dry day and we're going to beat back the lawn. And okay. we're, we're improving things, vehicles get moved around. I pulled the engine out of that truck. That needed done because that truck was just... You pulled the engine out. Derelict as I dropped the engine out of the truck. Dropped the engine <laughs> out of that truck. You know, some of these projects are derelict. The other thing is this summer we have to take into account that we can't spend all our time and energy on the Valiant because we really need to collect some firewood. And in order to do that, I need my truck running. And okay. my truck runs, but it is not ready to go. This picture up there is stale. People here have are not from earlier. Can you put that picture back up there? That's the picture that you, that's what you were working on the last couple of days. That, that's the back of her skid steer. And the thing had oil leaks, uh, hydraulic leaks, just fix it and leaks again, fix it, fix it, fix it again, fix it again. So she went out and bought an air tank, a five gallon air tank, which we, she cut it open. We welded fittings in it and everything. So now that's a hydraulic tank and it doesn't leak so nice to have hydraulic and it's got an in and an out in the bottom plus it on the top it has a filler neck and a, a vent and so and then that other that's wrong, my temporary full it's fuel a tank wrong, temporary fuel tank it's not it needs, chrome it's brushed it's, it it's needs, aluminum and it's actually the overflow tank for the valiant but i needed a fuel tank that and the other one was awkward size and i had to take it off to fit this but now the skid loader works, so we can do other things that we needed the skid loader to get other things done. So it's like, it's a big production keeping things moving, and, and it really so, isn't very linear. Like, we work on this for a while, then we have to work on this, and then we go back and forth, and it's just so we overwhelming. Got, we got no answers what they want to see me do. So I guess maybe the turbos one of them, but I guess we got to get back on the Valiant. We'll get the, you know what we did? We didn't really make any videos when we were rebuilding the front end. We just set up the live in the shop, and Kim did most of that work, 
And I sat there and talked on the live and handed her tools and everything. Where is everybody? Did the rapture happen? Did we get left behind? Well, there's 15 people left. Yeah. Which is okay. Everyone except the really, really not dirty the, people got taken away. The, the leak was <laughs> now in Now we get fun. He's asking, the, heat, the, the leak was in the hydraulic fluid reservoirs. Yes. That was most of it. And the hydraulic what? fluid reservoirs are those two... Uh, posts upright that you see. Things. The yeah, two this uprights. one here and this one here. And then this thing here that goes across actually links them together to circulate the so, fluid. So those two things are what supports the the uh, the scoop. But, the, you know, they also got to carry fluid and then they crack, the welds crack down at the bottom. Well, they're full of oil, and I don't want a weld where there's oil on the inside because it'll turn to a gas. And, and we use some fingers. epoxy on them, but I like to pull stumps out with my skid loader, so I ram it into it and just at one corner and then twist, and the whole machine goes like this, and the weld just breaks again. So now we have a tank. So now my, I have a tank that can't. It's well, not affected by the twisting. It just hangs there, and that and this bar that goes across the top that it's mounted to, that's also yellow. Um, it's going to be part of the rollover protection. So we, you know, we're pushing forward with it. And it is a case brand skid skier. It's an 1816B. And if you go to my channel, Kim Fixes Things, there's a video about me working on that skid steer. We got it last summer and I've done quite a bit of work on the hydraulic system, but didn't make a lot of videos about it because it's just well, greasy and grimy and it's really small and you're like, to take the motor out to work on anything. And what I've told Kim is we'll run it with this tank with the hydraulic fluid in it. Then we don't have to have any hydraulic fluid in those two uprights. And she can drain them out the best she can. And we'll put some soapy water in there, highly soapy water, and drain that out a few times. And then I'll take some gas, like some welding gas, um, like uh, argon or something, put it in there so I'm not worried about uh, explosions in there and we'll re-weld the bottom of that so it's strong and I suppose you could use it as an oil tank again but at that point I don't think we care but I would like to strengthen those up so those welds aren't broken um, but I don't want to do it with oil in there because we'll have a we'll have a, it's not a caterpillar no, it's not a caterpillar it's a case C-A-S-E case, C -A -S -S -E, case. So you there can it see is, it right 1816. there 1816B she I gotta get bought. some replacement decals from it. The night after she painted that tank yellow, we went to a store and they had a lot of tractor stuff and they had paint that was case that color. And she bought the can of paint. But it was already painted and mounted on there the other yellow. So it would have been kind of cool to paint it the case color and put a case sticker on the back of it. But ours is diesel. Tank on one side, hydraulic on the other. But the fluid is in the bottom, not in the top. Yeah, ours, the fluid goes all the way down. Yeah, case hardened. <clears throat> ours was a diesel. Kim's. It's not mine. It's Kim's was a diesel. Uh, but somebody removed the diesel engine and put a Honda V twin 24 horse or something in there. 620. And they added a fuel tank. So both tanks had hydraulic fluid in them. So we, uh, that's just how this one is. Fuel tank? Yeah, you added a fuel. Somebody added. I a fuel. had to add an auxiliary fuel tank because the fuel tank, the factory fuel tank is under. Oh gosh, the factory fuel tank is under the motor, and I it was already disconnected, and they had like a tin tank setting up there, but the tin tank leaked. It's well, been a trial. There's I'm, always some unfinished project. Tank. Said his is diesel. He said the tank on one side is hydraulic. The diesel tank. It's on one side and hydraulic on the other. So I'm wondering if that's how that was originally. But but somebody added a fuel tank to it, obviously. No, because from the factory, the fuel tank is under the motor. Oh, you're sure of that? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. It's there okay. if you see it. But um, they stopped using it. It is sometime in the mid to late 80s, I think they made the you know, 1816 series track. It's an 1816 B, so whatever year they made those. Yeah, that's like a five-year period. There was an 1816, an 1816 B, and an 1816 C. So, it's the B. Yeah, it's still it's a good thing to have. It's a really small, rubber-tired, 
light duty thing and it came off an old chicken farm they were using it to clean up on a chicken farm we we push it pretty hard considering how little of a machine and how how many years it has on it and um they made it in 1816 you know it it breaks often enough that i wouldn't put it past it being that old that's I, why they had to put an engine on what it. What did I do? Used to, be, used to be pulled by a horse. Pulled by a horse, <laughs> yeah. I think we ran it for about two hours, and now it doesn't seem to be working right again, so i got to try and find a time it's to get back No electric facet might pump. Require. Oh, yeah. Oh, facet pumps. I like facet pumps. I use facet pumps all over in the airplanes because they're so light and everything, so you could take, like, if you had a main tank, you could transfer fuel around to the facet pumps. And they were light and they were quiet. They get noisy when the other tank empties. So you'd know when it was empty. B is 18, 16. In February. What? Pushed by <laughs> February. Goats. Two goats. Pushed by a goat. It's the heavy duty one. Yeah, the horses didn't pull them. They had to push them. So yeah, it must have been pushed by goats or rams. <laughs> Ram. Ram, God. That's a dodge. Yeah. Yeah, the one is a Dodge and the other is a Ram. I mean, they they mean business now. Ram. Jeez. Um, so anyway, that was the project the last few days. Yeah, I mean, like, we've we've been doing stuff. Like, sometimes this stuff, I don't know. Sometimes I just, I, I think, for goodness sakes, these people don't want to watch us work on this old crap. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to watch this. There's no way I can make this into good content. Okay. I would have to have an ego much larger than the ego that I possess in order to think that people actually care or want to see any of this. And I think I would have to be more attractive than I think that I am you, to think to... that people just want to watch just to see me. I don't know. Well, earlier you were talking about taking your shirt off, but then you didn't do it. So. Yeah, but I don't think we can do that on, on YouTube. <laughs> And I she, think, didn't, she didn't like the way her shirt fit. She goes, I'm going to take this off. I go, ah, you can't take your shirt off on YouTube. Yes, I can't watch. No, 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 no. You're going to, what are you going to, you're going to leave, oh yeah, you're going to leave that one on. Oh, geez. Here we go. No, I'm not doing it. You're not doing it? No. It's too hard to get it off? No, nah, yeah, I'd look like, mm, you I, look think okay. I think I'd be a little bit nipply. A little bit nipply? <laughs> a little nipply. You hurt yourself with nipples. You know what? I usually wear a bra for the stream because oh, it makes it look like I have bigger boobs than I do, but I didn't. We do. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, who's here that wasn't here? Yeah, she hurt herself, but but it wasn't as bad as it looked. A lot of blood, but it'll heal. Not I'm much. Okay. Uh, not much. Cut. Just cut both. I do have to open. like wear gloves if I'm gonna get really dirty, and I I can't like like okay. So I noticed that when I I used to just grab like I take Tylenol a couple times a day, you know, and I used to just grab them because they're the long skinny pills, and I just grab them and bust them in half, and I can't do that because my thumbs hurt too much, so I have to cut them with the with a, a knife to cut them. <laughs> so look at this. So, uh, yeah. She really scared me because she came in and was so I was blood. freaked out. I'm like, there was blood out shooting out of my freaking... She she was freaked out because there was a lot of blood. And she goes, you got to help me. And I'm like, let's run across the street and up the street a little ways to the medical wagon up there. They have this two days a week in front of the Dollar General. They have a uh, medical van there. And it's just walking. It's pretty cool. So, uh, so she wouldn't go. So she goes, you got to do this. I didn't want to do that, but I cleaned it up. It wasn't really that bad. You take Tylenol three times a day, uh, partial Tylenol. And, and I have been and, taking and she is Tylenol three times a day for probably well eight years. Doctor watching kidney function and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I don't know. I never needed a pill cutter. I just always went pop and it breaks in half. But, um, you know, the Dollar General, do you have Dollar Generals in, in, uh, in New Zealand? Wow. Dollar General, uh, used to be in town, but they changed their business model about 10 years ago and they moved the Dollar Generals really out to the edges of town and out in the country and we're out in the country. And there's a Dollar General really close to us. 
and now two days a week there's a van there that's a it's a medical van I, that's where my doctor is now i go to the medical van there's a nurse in there he goes over whatever he has to go to the doctor comes up on a screen i we do everything there it's it's really cool so i mean it sure is better than having to get an appointment going into town and waiting and waiting and waiting and filling out forms and all that it, it's i sat there and the the guy asked me a few questions. He filled out the form online. Doctor comes up on a screen. It's, yeah, it's pretty nice stuff. But, um, yeah, I was ready to take her over there. Oh, why on the, on the, on the Tylenol? I don't know. Unfinished you... projects. I have, I have a sp spinal degeneration. I've had multiple surgeries on my spine and I live with chronic pain. And, um, I know I'm not supposed to take Tylenol, but there's only, uh, it's to the point where it's like, well, do you want narcotics? And I'm like, no, because those are really problematic and, and bad. And they're like, well, take Tylenol. And when Tylenol doesn't help any more, then we'll have to put you on narcotics. So I continue to take Tylenol. They, they, I am under a doctor's supervision and they, um, they test periodically. They do blood work to make sure that I'm not harming my liver or whatever, but eventually my liver will give out. And I try not to use more than I need. Like that's why I'm breaking pills in half because I'm only taking the smallest dose that helps. But if I don't take painkillers, I can't function at all. And as it is, what? We worked three or three and a half hours yesterday. And it was like the biggest day of yard work that we've done in months. She was whooped. And I, I, this is all we've done. This live stream is the only thing that we have done today and I won't be able to do anything out. I'm like exhausted because she like, came oh, home. We both, lot. we both came home yesterday afternoon and she goes, I got to take a shower. She's filthy. She's working hard. Yeah. She, and there was lots of vines. Dove, I was worried I was digging in poison ivy. So I jumped she straight in the shower. through the shower, got in bed and she was done for till to, to this morning. Yeah. So, um, and honestly, I feel great about the fact that I was able to do three hours of yard work yesterday. Mostly it was just driving the mostly, skids. Mostly it's on the skid steer. But Although I had to get you got like, off, on and off a bunch of times. She got on and off a few times and grabbed a chainsaw and had to do a little chopping and stuff to make some of the pieces smaller. But a lot of times uh, uh, she was on, uh, on the skid steer. I like how American friends say narcotics we have. And, uh, and it says alcohol. <laughs> you know, she doesn't drink at all. No, I don't. I don't, drink I don't know if she ever has. Um, I have. I and and I and I. There I, isn't enough alcohol to treat the problems I'm dealing with, so I, I do, just I, have to abstain. I like alcohol, like a mixed drink once in a while, or I used to drink beer like on hot days. But I have. Uh, I'm diabetic. It's just not good for me don't really need it. I drank some. You know who got me started was Wendy. Not Wendy. Who was it? It was uh, Colleen. Oh, yeah. And No Name Nationals. Colleen had me in a no alcohol beer. So I keep a little of that around. I probably drink. I mean, since the first No Name Nationals, I probably drank three six packs of it. So that's been a year and a half. So it's not like I drink a lot, but I do like a beer on a hot day. But yeah, the alcohol, I just had to kind of stop that because... Cause of the diabetes and I'm feeling pretty good because my diabetes is best. It's under control better than it has been in 15 years. So, um, I'll not take uh, painkillers from the doctors. I only take over the counter. Hold on. Pontomaniac, the acupuncture thing, the closest thing that I'm doing to acupuncture right now, I'm not against it. I just not experienced, but right now the pain clinic, they do, uh, I almost said methane injection, uh, some kind of steroid injections in your spine. So I have to get an MRI next month and they're going to see if there's anything they can do to help with the pain. Like, it's not like I take painkillers and the pain goes away. It's just like I take painkillers and I can get up out of bed and do things still. And uh, same with, um, KJ, Colleen, good. Said? Thanks, Wendy. Th thanks for showing up and good luck with your taxes, man. Mine are done. Um, uh, yeah. A couple uh, of years ago, Wendy, I was I was so bad that I couldn't get up off the floor. Like I was in so much pain, I was 
on the floor, writhing in pain, and they said, you have to take this or else we can't do anything for you. So I learned how to take the stuff that came from the doctor as the doctor prescribed it, methane injection, Kim, 60% more <laughs> peak horsepower. That's right, and it helps reduce overheating. So there's that, you know? Jeez. Reduces combustion temperature. But be careful what you have in a syringe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I don't talk about it too much because it's. It's. You know, we all got problems, and nobody's getting out of here alive. So, Junk just Car Willie, try to have fun with what we got. Hey, Junk Car Willie, I just saw a video of yours. It. It was uh, at the. Uh, to the stream. It was at the. Um, uh, the land speed record stuff. Oh, he loves it when you do that. And what? And is that like a replay from before, or is that? Uh, Something that just happened. Isn't it that time of year? Well, it's usually like the week after No Name Nationals. Oh. So, I don't know. Maybe there's like several events and I'm missing one of them that's right down the road here and I'm missing it. The other thing is... Uh, you ought to be planning for stuff like the that. The other thing is... Uh, junk Car Willie. Man, you did some that showed the score, because by the time the person drives down there, you hear their exhaust, like, a, you know, two kilometers away, and and then you never see the how fast they went. And you could barely hear the announcer, and you were showing the scoreboard. That was really cool. But this one, again, I, I couldn't hear the announcer. So it was really uh, a new one. Second to fifth. There are three this year. Man, I gotta I gotta go on the website and see. I gotta go on the website and see because I want I, even if I just go there to watch the thing, it's gonna be <clears throat> it's gonna be uh, fun to see and it's not very far from here. You know, I grew up in Southern California or Central California. Then the military sent me all over and everything, and then I worked for a defense contractor. I got sent all over. Now I'm in Tennessee and it's kind of centrally located, and I'm I'm home. A lot it's really good to be home but close by there's a lot of events you know the no name national isn't far from here and the uh there's a corvette museum it's just a hour away and those uh the uh, uh that land speed record stuff's only a couple hours away and uh i i've got to, i gotta i gotta go to that at least once well is it is it, did you mean to say May 2nd to 5th? That oh, means, it says, nay, I didn't understand that. May 2nd well, to 5th. That means next month. That means you need to look it up. You need to find that. You need to meet Junkar Willie down there and and coordinate. Okay. I'll, when we get done here, I'll I'll go look that up and see see when that is. You want to race me? No, I, you don't want to race me. Uh, Let's <laughs> check Kim, have you tried stem cells? Oh, God. I, I can't. You, you're going to have to talk I, about I will it. when they're available. Right now, stem cell stuff is not available for the condition that I have. And uh, pontomaniac acid is like scoliosis. And it's it's not that scoliosis is more like a curvature of the spine. I've had uh, surgery in my lower back for spondyloliosis. And that is kind of how it's pronounced. Something like that. A lot of lilioliosis which is um, my spine literally, uh, well, from the back, it collapsed forward off of itself, so they had to... The problem is, is it's not legal in this state, first of all. Second of all, it's really not my preferred uh, treatment. And then also, if you are taking, drinking alcohol or taking some other kind of substance, you become an unmanageable patient. They don't, they don't want to deal with you. It's like, oh, good luck with your pot or whatever. It's like, I'm not against those things. It's just like, I'm in a situation where I really need help from a He's calling licensed me out. professional. Does that mean I'm going to have to take a six-cylinder Valiant to go to the land speed rig? You allowed to have another car help push you down the track? <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, this year I get a uh, press pass and we'll be halfway down the track. May 3rd to 5th, July 6th to 8th. Maybe we'll go to that one. And uh, October. See, now October is the one that's right after No Name. Gee, why don't, you, go to why that don't you go to the May one? I guess because we got projects. We got so many projects I'll right now. I'll give you money. You can go. 
You guys gotta go together though, because I don't want to send them alone. I'll see here. And I, can, I can't go. I can't do it. I, I'm, just I'm not well enough up. for events. T it's too strenuous. She doesn't go on a no name nationals. It's about as far as she can. It's about as far as she can go. It's a lot. I wish it wasn't all in three days. Like trying to pack that in together. I gotta double up on my meds, and I get permission from my doctor to do that. I gotta double up on my meds so I can function all day long, and it's just like. You know what? By I, the time we're done, I am just you, I'm wiped out for a week. You know it's what terrible. I should? You know what I should take it the land speed record. The Mazda. I've had that Mazda. It is the fastest vehicle we own. I've had that Mazda up to 117, I think. But it, you put it in fifth gear and it slows down. So the fastest you can go is in fourth gear, which is straight through. You know, so I don't know. It's like my brother and sister died from meds. That's why I hate painkillers. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to be, you got to really, you got to really pay attention. You know, I don't know if any of you watch Ari. He was here earlier. Aries always thing when he's when he's closing down his live is uh, check your fluids. She and I were going to no name nationals last year. We got like a mile out of town already. Cars, vans getting hot. <clears throat> we didn't check the fluids. And the last time we checked the coolant was a year before when we drained the coolant out so she could race, and then we put the coolant back in. And that was a year earlier was we checked the coolant. So we're out on the road, and we did a video on it. She walked down to some creek and came back up with all these bottles of water and got the van going again. So check your fluids. Yeah, and and a three-hour ride over to No Name Nationals was her limit. She was done. She drove some of it, and I drove probably two-thirds That of first it. year going to No Name Nationals by myself from Pittsburgh was was the most epic journey of, like, my adult life. It you, was insane. You took several days, and you had a bed in the back of the van. Yeah, I'd drive for a couple hours and then sleep, and, and that's how I made it all the way from Pittsburgh to Sykeston. And it was no one believed that I could do it. None of my friends, they, they were all like, Kim, just don't, that's too much. Anyways, um, Wendy. Wendy, that's, that's I am, terrible. That is horrible. I'm so sorry that this, this is, like, befallen your family and and painkillers are incredibly dangerous and that is why so many people have had issues with um chemical dependency sets in rapidly and and it, there's yeah i am trying to not die from it and i i uh manage it as best as i can and jack car willie uh, don't be sorry because you know um i i don't like to talk about it too much because i don't want it to take be like the highlight of every conversation like we all have struggles cool. and i like to enjoy the time that i have as best as i can and like the people who are in my life are fantastic the fact that i get to live here and do the things that i get to do it's because of him he he makes it possible for me to to do my YouTube channel and work on my projects and stuff like that. And we have a great time together. And there's so many people in the community, like people watching this stream who are just like, great. Like, and that's, I focus on that because I think that's, that's all we can do. Well, maybe I will go over there. I don't know. I'll you absolutely should go over there. Junkard Willie, if you can accommodate I, him. And if I blow up the Mazda, you can come get me. <laughs> you should not drive the Mazda trying to do some kind of crazy land speed thing. I don't Why? think you should. Just, it's, I think you should go and observe, especially two, your first time there. You should go and observe. It's two kilometers, which is what, like a mile and a quarter? It's just wide open for a mile and a quarter. I've done that before. Go and find a team to join. <laughs> join somebody's team. And oh, you know what will happen if something. I go over there? I want to build a land speed record car. Well, and then we'll be building something really stupid. You know. I, I would say you, you know what army, but what, I, I what did really I do, do in, mean you what, and which army because we could join one. What did I do in the Air Force? I was a jet engine mechanic. See, and then you start talking about land speed records. Well, that's a different record, though, with jet. <laughs> Great spirit I'm reading for you. Uh, by the cell biologicals, they are more or less pick anybody anywhere for anything. And they have, I don't know what all that is. Unfinished Project, he's talking about uh, stem cell treatments. Oh. And um, I'm not sure if I'm a candidate with the condition that I have for... For that kind of thing and you know 
I don't know what's in the cards. I'm, I'm just trying to take care of myself the best as I can and look for, you know, hopefully that something comes around. Yeah, I'm John Carl Willie help. says it's older than 2009, which the car isn't. It's 2016. You need a fire suit and pass tech. Do oh, I need, pass do I need, tech. Do I need a helmet? i got to buy a helmet pretty soon. But uh, And pass tech. The car should pass tech. Um, I don't know why the headlights are broken. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what... Take what are you, them off. What are you trying to prove by making going really fast in the Mazda? I mean, I guess if it appeals to you. Oh, he said he's going to race me with something that's... Uh, he said there's a four-cylinder Pinto there. I don't know what he wants to race me with. Probably is... It's something he drives over I think there. if you're going to race anything... But you don't, you don't... You're only racing a clock. You're not racing two cars at a time. You're only well, just... why don't you take the Valiant then? We build it with our own two hands from... It's not ready to go. a pile of parts. It needs tires. It needs the other half the front end rebuilt. Well, get your it. ass in gear. It needs a bunch I mean, of stuff. No, it's no name national. It does car. need tires, yeah. <clears throat> and and well, if I go there, I'll just drive the Mazda over there, or I'll drive the Jeep over yeah. there. Yeah. And, and, and neither of which are race cars. Go yeah. and scope it out, meet some people, get the lay of the land, and then you can plan for the future. If that's and, and that's and doing. that's really what I want. Yeah, I that don't makes want to sense. Race over yeah, there. yeah, yeah. A fire suit, like a suit with flames. Oh man, I'm gonna make a fire suit. I'll run around with flames. No. If I had to put slant sixes, I, I would put, I would turn two of them around so that they were, you know, like a big double V and that, but then we'd have to run two of them in reverse rotation. So there's a lot, a lot to that. Who remembers? Nobody's going to remember this. Pontomania client, Tabu Mike. It was the, all the old customizers back in the 60s, <clears throat> 50s and 60s. There was a, a couple of guys called the Alexander Brothers. And they, <clears throat> man, I'm losing my voice. Get Tony to sponsor you, Land Speed. They, they were, car. they, they were, the Alexander brothers customized the Camaro, and it was all drawn out what they were going to do. And that's exactly what they did. They had two slant sixes in there that opposed each other. One ran the front wheels, one ran the back wheels. So it was actually like a V12 in a, in a like a '67 Camaro. And I don't know if you can still find pictures of that car or not. Fire a, suit, like a food. Yes, it's a suit that that so absorbs gasoline, and then you can light yourself on fire. Stern drive, two twenty five Mopar Marine, or reverse direction. Right, we can use Ooh. the cam out of those. Ooh. I think they have different rear main seal too, or something like that. You know who was it had the small block Chevy that leaked oil profusely, and they couldn't get it to quit. And when they pulled it apart. They had a marine. Because... They had a marine engine crankshaft in it. Crankshaft and the little I marks were the other direction, so it was pumping oil out through the seal instead of holding. That's it. wild that it would make that much difference. But I guess if it was yeah, it was just pushing the oil out instead of holding it in. Wow. Yeah, I I didn't even know there was a uh, a slant six like that. I didn't realize wow. they were reverse rotation. I thought that they were just on the side. Reverse four forty from a boat. boat. You know, I was thinking a small block Chevy. It might have been a small block Chrysler. I don't know. Somebody was just pumping oil out the rear main, and it was from uh, from that Tommy Ivo. Yeah, Tommy Ivo had four engines, four, four Buicks or something on a dragster. Spiral, ha yeah, spiral hatching, whatever you call it. I don't know what you call it, but I that's exactly what it was. It's that spiral stuff on the those marks on the crank. Chrysler engineering first. You know, when I was in the Air Force, we had a tug. We had a little tug that you Thanks for stopping in, Tavo. It's always nice oh, yeah, to have good you. To see. We had a tug with a, a slant six in it. That was in 1973 and 1974. You can use that crank if you mill those flutes off. Flutes, yeah. yeah. If you know that that's, the, that's yeah, there, they, I'm sure there's something you can do to keep them from doing much. But. And they didn't know that. They had a problem. They had a real hard time fixing it. it took them a while. TV, TV Tommy Ivo. Yes. Remember him well. I remember his cars. Crazy stuff. Uh, the reverse rotation cam is different though, right? I would expect it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, it would have to be backward. It would have to... Yeah, it would be ground in reverse. Or or it has a gear drive or something. Yeah, I don't know how it works. No, it would have to be the same. 
have to be the same cam, basically. Just, just, it'd be the same camshaft. It'd just be ground in reverse. But Although, how would the, um, the oil pump would have to have a reverse ground gear, too? Suck oil in, and then go back into the pan, and all you have to do is drain the pan out. <laughs> I actually lit my arm on fire with ether. Just oh. now? I've lit myself on fire Don't more do times that. than I can count. Did you do that? When? I have Wagon Master. Where's Wagon Master? Kim searched Tommy Eibel Wagon Master. There's a guy that has... It's kind of funny. I got One of the other things I'm into is kind of like uh, CB radios and, and uh, amateur radio and stuff. There's a guy named Wagon Master who does a live on Thursday nights. And I saw a wagon master. I thought, what's he doing in here? <laughs> Tommy Ivo. Yeah, look up Tommy Ivo. Look up Tommy Ivo, four engine. All right, all right. Tommy Ivo, four that engine. That means if the oil pump helix is, is backwards, then the distributor gear is different, too. That's a bunch of stuff. Oh, I see. It's like everything everything down under goes backwards, is what Dean is saying, including the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> so on board. 340, have reverse direction. Reverse rotation cam. It's gear drive with only two gears. See, that's what I was thinking. One would have a chain and the other would have two gears. Oh, in English, what are you going to do? Bring people up on... Okay, we talked about this at the beginning. Kim, I think we've decided to do it once a month or once like every four weeks or something. We'll bring people up. We'll bring people up. Wendy, do you want to be a candidate? Do you want to come up? Because uh, that would be... Uh, we'll have two more lives without... And then the next live after that will be. We're gonna we, do it once, we can maybe have you on if twice you want. a month. We'll do Streamyard, but it, it's more complicated. And if we're gonna, and the quality of the stream is not as good, so if we're gonna do it, we'll just we'll that'll be the stream. Is it'll be like guest special guest stream. So you could put a chain on a three hundred runway first. I'd have to think that one out. Um, okay, did you find Tommy Ivo? No, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Ideal. And then put four engine or something like that. Four engine dragster? Yeah, there you go. Okay, I got to bring that picture up. It's uh yeah, it's like uh it's lower corner right down there. This that one? one, yeah, bring that one up. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. I think that's it. Can I get a Oh, it's going to take us to another one. Oh, that's there you really go. Really good picture, though. That's like something. That looks like something that uh, Two Hacks is building. Two Hacks? Oh, shoot. But his only has one engine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say no, too. <laughs> oh, you're. He just made. He just called you. He was like, Your dragster only has one engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Two Hacks. What is eight cylinders? Give him a break. The guy's... It's yeah, that's what I thought it was. Dragster. You said Pontiacs. I thought it was Buicks, but it could have been Pontiacs. I don't know. Those do look a little like Pontiacs, the valve covers. I don't know. I can't see it that well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Y'all jump in if, yeah, if I have off. Or, oh, yeah, you got a work schedule problem. So what we'll do, do, do we have a way to get a hold of Wendy? I don't know. We Wendy, just shout her name. Wendy, give give me look a, in the mirror, say her name three times, and then she'll appear. Click my heel three times, and no. I want to go home. Okay, Wendy, Buff Del Campo at gmail.com. Buff Del Campo is one word, and uh, and we'll coordinate this somehow, and then we'll get you on. That would be fun. Love is symmetrical. No change. I didn't either. Drive helix, nylon gear. Drive reverse Ford 300 V6. Hmm. You know, Dean probably understands all this. When I was researching my full Ford, uh, the only reason the cam could be used was because the distributor gear was cut opposite. <laughs> it wouldn't mesh. I forgot about the distributor. Uh, I mean, the cam with the opposite direction distributor drive is otherwise the same as Ford rotation cam. Okay, when you'll get a hold of us. Oh, yeah, we'll end up with a real road toter on here. Oh, my, one of my favorite cars. That's got to be real close to the top of my list as cars I want. 
Pinnell wagon. Or oh, Pinnell, yeah, send us Pinnell, some Pinnell, Pinnell van would probably exclusive be photos so we can pop them up during the stream for yeah. when we do that. Yeah, Planning well, ahead is always nice. All of them, yeah, and then we'll have all the, uh, all the, uh, we'll have all three of your cars on, on here. But, yeah, Road Toad, 60, 1960 uh, Valiant, or maybe a 61, real close to the top of my list is a car that I really want. And the, the little Pinto vans, I, I had several of those, and I converted a Bobcat to a van. Uh, but they're the same thing. And uh, I don't know what else. Eh, stuff I can never afford. 67 through 9 Barracuda Fastback, but all those things are worth so much money now. I'll never get one. I never really knew about the reverse rotation stuff. That's for boats. Yeah, or if you want a car to go backwards real fast. One engine for now. <laughs> Just kidding. One engine for now. Yeah, well, it, I can't think of his name. Your your welder, the guy that's helping you with all this, tell him you've decided to put four engines on it. See what he says. Uh, those are nail heads on that car. Yeah, that's what he used to run, were nail heads. Is that what... Oh, yeah, the reason it looks like that is because they're tipped way over on its side. Ah, oh, yeah, those are nail heads. Yeah, can you imagine the torque that thing has? <laughs> it's that differential up front with a... a Quick change I mean, it's got gear. Four drags on it. Paired stern drives, one Mopar, one with uh, the other opposite. Yeah, that thing's crazy, isn't it? Well, and then the, you know, he was an actor. And the, whatever studio he was doing most of his work with, they wanted him to sign something and said he wouldn't race anymore because they were afraid he was going to get killed racing. Uh, skew nails. They just bend them over with a hammer, apparently, those nails. You know what a nail head is? Yeah, I'm just... What is that thing doing there? That, there's another one there. It looks like a monkey mobile. What is that thing? Oh. Yeah, TV. TV. Tommy, I go check out that quick... Yeah, that's what I saw. I noticed the quick change uh, gear up front. I saw that. Is that a quick change? The one, you know, isn't that what that is? I, well, I gotta get I, out of the way. I, I oh, you know. you made it bigger than that, and then we it, we can see it. I don't know how you did that. Four engine shell boat. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there it is, burning the four tires. Oh, this <laughs> is a better here. This move your head. Oh, move that's my better, head. That's a better image of what that oh, the my differential head looks like. See, is that? It is, it yeah, that be. is a quick change. See, you, you know how that works. You pull that cover off, and there's two gears in there, and you change those gears, and it changes the, the rear end ratio oh. without going into the into the differential. The setup for the yeah. ring gear. Ring and ring. Man, so many people ran those back a long time ago, and I haven't seen one in years. A quick change. People do things differently now. Yeah. I think the dirt track cars, they put the quick changes in them. I don't know. You expect the posed rocker. Yeah, the rock. You know, a nail head, it goes like this. The push rod goes up like this and then the rocker and then the valve they cross each other they go like that it's a monkey mobile i think barris did barris built that no who built the monkey mobile i don't think that was barris i remember the guy talking about it because he took the hood and flipped the took the hood apart you know the hood on that gto is like this and then there's a part of the hood that's the bottom that the, the part that uh, braces it all together and they took it apart and they flipped the whole thing over and then they put that on the bottom so that hood's an inside out hood dips way down comes up like this I'm trying to remember who did that Dean Jeffries did Dean Jeffries do that monkey mobile uh, Hewlin and Halibrand yeah Halibrand Halibrand had the quick changes I don't remember Hewlin but yeah I'm sure they did but uh the only thing I ever driven with a Hewlin transmission was uh, Day Tomas and Mangusta, I think, had a Hewlin transmission. And I remember that's the first time I, I only drove it once, and it was a Hewlin, tra Hewlin five speed. Do, 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 I believe the brand Siki makes. Uh, Dean Jeffries for the monkeys. Yeah, Dean monkey Je Mobile. Dean Jeffries built that. He was another, like, 60s. Courtesy of Wikipedia. 60s customizer, Dean Jeffries. All the old 60s guys were Dean Jeffries and uh, 
uh, who else? Uh, Alexander Brothers and and uh, George Barris. And, yeah, you know them all. Yep. Yeah, look at that thing. Look at that front end. That is just awesome. They just exaggerated everything, and it turned out so good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Oh man. So you go into the this thing? I don't know. You're telling me you're going to give me money. What, what, you want me out of the house? <laughs> I want you to enjoy your summer. I don't want you to be stranded here because I can't go. You can't find it. Can't find what? Okay, it's an email address. Uh, it's Buff Del Campo, one word, B-U-F-F-D-E-L-C-A-M-P-O at gmail.com. Type it in. So, it's... Oh, you tell you put it in. Is it going? Yeah, just send me an email at that. And then we can exchange phone numbers or whatever you want to do. And top radiator tank. Oh, yeah, look at that top radiator tank on that thing. That's crazy. Yeah, and the hood is an inside out hood. That's why that hood looks like that, so the blower would go through it. It's uh, I remember reading. I remember reading when this guy did this. Dean Jeffries did this. Uh, yeah, you know I should do some more stuff. I should some more. I should start doing stuff on my community page. Hewlett Transaxle was different. The Mangusta GT40 Pantera Maserati, or a same ZF gear West German. See, the Mangusta had a Hewlett. What I remember, and then the Pantera came out, it had a Z, oh, maybe it's the other way around. ZF, no, the ZF was in the Pantera, because I had customers that had Panteras. But the Mangusta, I only drove Mangusta one time, and it had a Hewlin. The one I drove had a Hewlin, and it had a uh, 302 Ford, and a Hewlin gearbox. And the Pantera had a 351 Cleveland with a ZF, uh, ZF five speed. Um, Miss German DS25 gearbox upside down in the Pantera. Oh, it could have been. I don't know. I remember it was a ZF. I remember the the uh, the uh, uh, Pantera had a ZF uh, five speed, and the the Mangusta had a a Hewlin. Although they the Mangustas they could have had all. There was one Mangusta had a small block Chevy, I think, in it. But there were. The, um, the production ones were 302 Fords, but I don't know, they could add any transaxles in them. The GT40s, I have no idea what they were. Never never been in a GT40, never even been, well, I was close to one, looked at one one time. I was already bored, same thing. Most of these exotic cars, I don't know. It's just I had a couple of car, a couple of customers, one of the Mangusta, just once, and then I used to uh, do some services, cooling system services on the Panteras. Mangus was my favorite one. Kind of a flimsy car, but it was oh, what a nice looking car. Kind of real head trip to drive it, you know. Oh, Daryl Starbird, he's another one. Heck yeah. Who's it? Oh, I should know his name. The guy that's Bad Chad's uh instructor is still alive. He's in his nineties. Ah, oh, I should know his name. <clears throat> woman man woman gusta i know i had a friend we were talking about the mangusta and his father goes what he said he, th he goes i thought you said man goosed you <laughs> Jeez. his father actually said that we were talking about a mangusta we were at laguna seca watching the races and we were hoping there was going to be a mangusta there but there wasn't he he said that his father said that who is the, who's the great customizer? He's out in the Mojave Desert now. That's uh. You're gonna ask me to names and peoples and stuff. I don't know. Bad Chad's instructor, friend, good friend. Oh man, I mean he's just one of the. He's the lead guy. The guy that's just a artist with lead. Bad Chad. Uh, Yeah, something like that. Oh, 
I should know the guy's name. <sighs> I feel terrible I can't think of his name. Somebody will think of it here. Tommy Evo? No. Um, Customizer in, uh, in, uh, I think he's in Mojave, somewhere around Mojave. Lots of good stuff on his card, YouTube. Oh. Uh, it's just, I remember because he walked into Bad Chad's shop, and I'm like, holy crap, look who's there. Yeah, Gene Winfield. Gene Winfield. Got it. Okay. Good, Bruce. Uh, and Lester. Lester LeSaber. Is he a Buick? Um, Actually, Lester, Lester got it first. You win. Yep. I win award it. you four Look up. Look up. In four. Not two. I could have given you just two, but you, you got it fast and you capitalized properly. You get that's, four points. That's what I was going to say. Look in uh, on uh, Wikipedia because <clears throat> it'll have... Just a bunch of information. Gene Winfield, I think he's like 96 or 97 years old. And he was in the hospital, but he's out. The last thing I know. And he's doing all right. The last thing I know. Yeah, look at him there. He's getting up there. What's it have for his age? He was born on June 16th, 1927. So he's 96? Last thing I knew, he was still working, but... It's got to be getting tough. Wendy, you emailed me. Okay. I'll, uh, I can look at it here, but I'll, uh, oh, and my son has talked to me. Yeah. Uh, Matt's, my son is going, he's traveling again. Okay, Wendy, I'm going to, I'll look at it when I get to, uh, when we're done here. Yeah, Winfield's Custom Shop. That guy's incredible. Can you smoke a pack a day of Winfield for free? Mm. 97 in June. Yeah, he's 96 years old. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I was, I don't know how many of you watch Bad Chat. I, I used to watch him like every night. Now I don't watch him as often. But uh, Gene Winfield walked into his shop. It's like, holy crap, look who's there. You know, and they were friends. And it's like, okay, bad Chad went and took Gene Winfield's uh, customizing uh, classes in uh, California. So, you know, bad Chad, he's, he gets a lot done. And uh, I do enjoy it, but watching a little when I had cable. I'm not big on customs guy though. Yeah, well he's YouTube now. Uh, Bad Chad's YouTube. He and Jolene. Uh, I just like his his attitude, just going after stuff. And he looks at something and just figures it out in seconds. And he's cutting and welding, and it's a little rough, but his it all comes out good, you know. He just did a 1950 Ford. It's not really the style I like, but it's it's pretty good stuff. Who's that? Who's that? Who you? Oh, Ed Roth. Yeah, Big Daddy Ed Roth. That's back in the late fifties kind of stuff. Yeah, look at that crazy stuff. Yeah, can you imagine? I don't really like that style of paint. That was really a big deal, like late fifties, early sixties. That kind of painting, and then the the grill. I think a drawer pull. You know, drawer pulls like from uh, cabinets. I saw Bob Lutz smoking a big cigar with Adam Wade on his classic U.S. Motor City car channel. Oh, did Bob die? I didn't even know it. Is Bob Lutz gone? Well, he probably is. Bob Lutz. I read I read one of his books, and it was outstanding. A book about uh, the automotive industry. Yeah, that's what I said. Bob Lutz well, died. let's check. Jack, don't, don't. Yeah, let's see what's going on there. Okay. Bob Lutz. Uh, yeah, and he's like president of like every automotive company and everything. Um, how old does it say he is? 
he was born in February 12th, 1932. Is he still alive? It doesn't have... Yeah, he's still alive. What age does it say he is? 92? He's 92. And he's getting up there. He, if you like to read, read, read Bob Lutz's books. Yeah, he's still alive. Um, really interesting guy. I mean, he's right there in the middle of it with all the, all the big companies. I went to a, okay, which one is this? Adam Wade was rear classic cars, automotive history. I went to one of this seminar for body work. Bought a rear window for a chop top for my buddy with 1,400 cars. Who is this? Uh, uh, now I'm lost. Oh, I assume it's uh What is that thing? This is uh, Ed Roth. It's got a surfboard. Every year they have a big daddy family reunion and from Utah where... He retired a heck of a great time if you ever get the chance to go. Yeah, he's he's quite a character. Can you can you scroll me up here for just just for a second? Let me look and then and then scroll back. That is um, more. Okay, scroll back down again. Just hit the arrow and go to the bottom. Yeah, Gene Winfield. So you went to one of Gene Winfield's uh, seminars. Man, I wonder if he still does those. Yeah, you know, I like custom body work, but not necessarily... Not necessarily what Bad Chad does, but I like the, the skills he has. Because the body work I would do, the custom stuff would be different. And I want to do some stuff to the Valiant. And I may do that. I, I want to do stuff for that, that little car that Kim bought. And I think we're going to end up arguing over that because she wants it and I want it. No, I don't care. The, the, make it run and you can do the, what you think the, is good. The spitfire. I got other projects so I can work on something. Cause that's I, what excites you. We'll, I'll do, a, do I, I want to do a, a custom custom body on that. And the and the Valiant, I'm gonna do some, just make some changes on it. I don't like four door cars so much, so I don't know. Uh, my dad and Bob, uh, Bob both like cigars. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't get started smoking anything. Although if you gotta smoke, I guess the cigar is better than puffing on cigarettes. You know we're over three that's, and a half hours. That's some rough stuff. Okay, so three and a half hours. But we had fun. Well, I mean we. Been having fun. Yeah, Rat Fink. You know, way back, I joined a, a, a local chapter, the Experimental Aircraft Association, and they called it, it was in California, and they called it the Rat Fink Squadron. And while I was there, they ditched the name Rat Fink because they said it was outdated. And I really didn't like that Rat Fink Squadron, but it was a bunch of old guys in there, and they were from that era. It was kind of funny. Yeah, the Rat Fink was pretty cool back then. The Silver Scroll, Wikipedia. Yeah, you know, Rick, Wikipedia, right? Wikipedia, uh, one thing I, it, it, there, there's a lot of errors and stuff in it, but one thing I like is at the bottom of the articles, they have references, so you can check on the stuff. And and things like people's, uh, their age and when they born and died and all this kind of stuff, it's usually pretty uh, pretty accurate. But a lot I of mean, stuff... I mean, you can get... It's a start. There's it's a start. It can't be your only source, but it's a source. I, I worked for an aircraft company, and somebody did a Wikipedia article on it, and it is so jacked up and so bad. That I, I can't even... It makes him so mad. I'm just like, okay, I give up. I can't even fix that. It's so bad. It's like somebody just pulled it all out of their ass and wrote whatever they thought. It's like somebody didn't even ever go to the... have anything to do with the company. I missed that. Yeah, yeah there's some people. Uh, yep. Okay, so I'll go look at uh, Wendy's uh, every thong. 
<laughs> right. They get a lot of thing things thong. Well, the thing I do like about Wikipedia is at the bottom, a lot of times there's a lot of uh, references, references, which are books and things that might have it right. And they do get a few things right. Okay. I will go look at Wendy's email. And I think we're going to... Let's see. Successful mission. Mandatory cigar. But you know, a lot of people do that. But I'm just not a cigar person. I'm not a tobacco person at all. Just me. I grew up in a house where my mother puffed on cigarettes oh, and kept yeah. every, every door and window shut. And I had to breathe that for the first 18 years of my life. And, man, I, I don't ever want to breathe cigarette I have, smoke again. I have lived with smokers, too, and it's bad. Your clothes smell like smoke. Your bang smells like smoke. Your we skin, had, it soaks into you. you we had forced air ventilation. I put a piece of sheet metal over mine so the air from the heater wouldn't come in. I stuffed towels under my door, and I kept my window wide open. I was in high school. My clothes reeked of cigarettes. And it was, I'd wash my own clothes and then rush them up to my room, keep them near the window. It didn't make any difference. I think everybody in my high school thought I was a closet smoker or something. It's horrible. Um, and you know, it killed my mother, sadly. She quit smoking a year before she died, but it was all, it was circulatory problems. I love my mother, but she, she ruined her life with cigarettes. It was tobacco, damn tobacco. Ed um, Roth was a big influence on, on a whole generation yep. of people. They, they just were like, wow, I could do do stuff like that. Yep, the art. I remember the I remember the T-shirts when I was in early grade school, and you weren't allowed to wear them to school. But I mean, stickers and all the rat think and all the crazy, all that crazy stuff. That was, uh, yeah, that was, that was good stuff. Yeah, I probably did get kids into art. I think we're going to end it, Kim. All you right. Well, it? we'll be back next Tuesday, How if not sooner. Um, oh, we've we, been on almost four hours. We do have some stuff in the pipe. Hopefully, we'll have some uh, regular format videos coming out for you here this week. Um, the Mile High Club. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know what the Mile High Club is? I do. You do? Okay. Okay. So, um, I want to thank everyone who came in and commented and, and or watched or, or, you know, participated in whatever ever way. It means a lot to us to be able to do this. Um, and, you know, and it seems like even after we're done, people watch the, the re watch the live and stuff like that. So there's a lot of people who are getting some enjoyment out of it. And I know that they're watching your comments as well along the way. So hopefully they get some they get to enjoy your jokes and snide comments. It's, it's wanna, fun. I so say thank something. you. This goes right up on a replay, but the comments don't come up for almost 24 hours. I don't, don't know why know that why. is. We don't know why, and we can't make the comments come up. They just show up when they show up. So sometime 18 to 24 hours after this, after the live, the comments pop up. So they're, they'll be there. But. Yes. So we'll be back next week. Thanks for being here. And uh, we're going to call it the end there. So have night, a great all. night. Take care of yourselves as soon as I figure out how to make any of this go.